you people should start learning the things by yourself and uh, you know you can com complete the what we still uh, what we covered till that okay and on the monday i can run a session where if someone still feels a challenge there i'll help them to solve this challenge because there are i can see there is a different type of i mean there is a gap between the people understanding some understand everything some doesn't able to under uh, some some not able to start even with a with doing the setup right they are stuck on to the setup so let's take your time complete the setup everything and you know closing the session tomorrow and telling you that you are off you you are on your own i'll give you a day time or a, let it be a three or and a weekend where you can think of everything and come back on the monday with a fresh mind and tell me what you needed okay and we'll we'll try to shift this session from 3 to 5 okay or 3 to 6 probably on the monday let me check my calendar on the monday and based on that i'll 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 uh I'll drop a mail to the learning and the development, and we'll shift our Friday session to uh, Monday session. So Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Monday. Okay, so it's view J studying also starting on. Okay, three to five still works for me. I'll set up a timing between three to five. Uh, three to five, or uh, if is is that okay? So I'll set up a timing three to five. Please prepare that session will extend for more half an hour or so. So don't. Go, go go for a immediate commitment if you have any questions i'll try to solve it in that session uh, and you do come up with a lot of questions and we can solve it also we can learn some interesting topics that you are given to me so we'll try to cover the rxjs the fundamentals of the rxjs then uh, we also try to cover the the life cycle hooks then we try to cover some uh, uh, i mean the custom directives so some simple custom directives sort of that so i can take you to the complex thing so first clear these basic things okay so today's day will be doing a setup so today we are doing a uh, server side setup also and mean i mean we are creating a feed server through which we can get the data and then we will be doing the http calls once the http call successful we are also using the input output function to display that in the grid so let's start our today's exciting session and let's start with our first question so what is do you mean by the user control and why they are used Uh, user controls are like buttons, um, links. Is that right? Uh, yeah. That's a HTML control. That's a HTML control. So button is a HTML control. Right? I'll tell you the context. So yeah, it's it's okay. So there is a button and other. These are like the HTML control. HTML given as a control. There are some control called as the grid, which is a user control. Okay. So grid is not given by the HTML. HTML given as the table, but we also use a grid. why we use a grid because we can show the data uh, uh i mean we can show the data to the user and we can perform operation on that data that's why we use a grid so grid is a grid is a user control there are multiple like like the table doesn't have a proper structure so you do need to add a css for each and every time when you when you when you create a table for the user right so instead of that you can create a table as a your i mean you create a grid as your user control and these control you can say uh, give it to user and tell the user that hey this control uh, give it to your developers and tell the developers hey this is the my control you can use it every time you wanted to flourish a data into it now in our case we are having a customer data consider what if we are having also the supplier data so we are having a customer data as well as the supplier data so supplier who supplies customer who use it so we are having both the data wanted to display in the grid so both the data can be can be put inside the grid if we have a generic control generic control that can be used by the supplier that can be used by the uh that can be used by the customer so these generic controls are usually called as the user control so far with me yes yes great so we understand what is the user control okay uh yeah so let's let's move on yeah, hello yeah what's your, what's the question uh what is the grid i am not clear about this okay okay i'll share i'll share so there are lot of okay I share my screen. So there is something called as a JSON grid. There is something called as a WebEx grid. So grid is like a table, right? Grid is a table. That's it. Okay. It's, grid it's is a Angular, table. It's from Angular side. Okay. Angular side, we can create a um, user control called uh, called grid, right? Right. So this is simple table. Like this is you know. this is also can be feasible like you can click here you can click here you can have a another another row where you can add this 
now this is not he just he just said that hey i wanted to let it be he just said that hey this is my members and it directly directly created the structure for him right okay okay so you are not doing the ta ta th every time you just say that hey this is my custom control you provide me the let it be you provide me the headers and you provide me the data and i'll create a grid for you or i'll create a table for you and this is applicable to everyone means whatever who who are give you the a header whoever gives you a data will create a simple grid for them so in html ultimately it's create a table right table is table right 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 okay. so right or base is every language base is javascript every uh, front end language base is a javascript and every 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 javascript renders a dom and each dom has a html element even your custom element is ba uh, is converted to the html yes okay. so base is same and your code is in uh, run into the binary format at end of the day so your javascript code can work understood by the c++ c++ code understood by the binary format okay. so everything is simple here nothing complex but what why we use it because it gives some kind of a feature like you know here i can select highlight something sort of that so that is grid so there is also different flavors of grid present in the market json grid some grid says that hey i do this this web is grid is certain sort of spreadsheets it's used for a this web is grid is very popular it's used for a schools because there is a mark sheets right and this mark sheet can be rendered very easily in this grid and students records maintain in this grid so this is this is grid popular for a e learning domain so it's like google sheet right ah google sheet exactly but it it gives you google sheet on your uh, on your web page so yeah mm -hmm. got it so it's a it's google like sheet a, right and it gives it's you like, very it's a plugin or i mean it's, it's like a plugin plugin right in game install okay and spin okay webex and pen install webex then you can use it right so instead of using theirs we will just try to create very simple grid of ours in today's lecture okay so it's in your project also you can see there are a lot of user controls that been used by your or there are certain controls which 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 you which you can define as your uh, utilities through which you can uh, increase the code reusability in your project and you will start writing a code that is in good quality so let's try to so let's let me share i mean i have already shared my screen so let me go to the our uh, seventh day and we'll go step by step right we'll go step by step very simple step by step so you can understand it okay and uh, right so if i go to the src there is a customer app we already already created this app right so there is oh, i am seeing this okay so it doesn't like on in it okay i'll try to inject something is it on it and i turn it okay so we are also also using the input and output uh we are also using the input and output directives here and let's see let's let's go step by step one step at a time it should not take a multiple step so you will get confused. okay so if you go to our our utility folder if you go to our utility folder we we previously have there are common uh, sorry let's create a common model dot ts there hello yes everyone right so we had a utility folder right in day 6 let me check quickly if we had the utility folder or not yes we had created great so we just have the customer app logo right 
and after that we will be adding a common utilities there common models there right our common models will be adding here now we are having a customer so here if you go we are having a customer and we are having a supplier so in the customer also if you go to the customer model we have that i mean we have we are having the three properties so if you look looked at our day six in the customer model we had a three properties what are they customer code customer name and customer amount is my understanding correct yes yes so we had a three properties right now these same three properties is valid for the supplier but the supplier amount is very less and the customer amount is high based on what we sell to the customer okay so the customer code like supplier code supplier name and supplier amount these are the three properties there so what we do is we'll create a simple property simple class called as an entity and we'll include these properties within the entity okay so we go here so in my case i'm saying it data row so i'll just create a data row or it's it's having the three properties code name and amount and like we in, wanted to enforce this we uh, on our customer also on our supplier so what we'll do we create a interface for it so first we created the interface and what is this this is nothing but an indexer we are telling our class or uh, interface is telling that those who implement also implement the indexer where the key is a string where key is a string and the value can be any value can be string number whatever you like okay so that is imposed by our indexer so sorry that is uh, provided by our indexer indexer doesn't come up free like it's come with a javascript so we have we have explicitly need to define an indexer so when we define an indexer we can access it using the array syntax anyway i'll show you that so basically i'm defining code name and the amount so far with me yes okay yes. so what we are doing is we define a contract and we implement this contract within the class called as a data row so that this con the, this class has three, three property and yeah and this is a mandatory for everyone who is who is implement i mean this is a contract with uh, implies on the data row and there is a code name and amount property within it okay so, now uh, i just want to know uh, what is key uh, column string so when you implement that class on um, that uh, interface so you have you have also the means declaring you are not assigning anything means key column string column any so an interface also you have indexer. written it is indexer i'll show you it is indexer so for time being just forgot about it okay for time being uh, think that it is not present okay once we comes to that part i'll explain you okay uh, let's take a step by step so if we go there now we'll miss a multiple step in between and uh, you know there is a confusion gets started out so let's this data row is there right now what we do is we go to our model we go to our model and we extend the data row so far with me yes and yes, now sir. if you notice there are three properties you can remove that and we can refer this property from here and wherever the property is being referred code we will be using this okay so wherever the property is being referred like code and all this stuff which will be using it from here these properties are being referred on the html so if you can go to the html i have changed everywhere wherever there is a you know when wherever there is a customer model dot customer code is being referred i change it to code name and amount okay because the same property we will be using on to uh, in a supplier so we have our customer model where we extends customer model where we extend the data row and we has had our property and it has its own properties also like the uh, form custom groups where we uh, where you already done the validation for it right and here we uh right and here we have this validation uh, different validations here in the constructor and as this is a model so it's allowed to do the validation within a constructor i'll come to the angular life cycle hooks and i'll explain you where this usually you call the functions but yeah let's let's focus here so this is a customer and this is a constructor within which defines a uh, defines the validation and then it also has the property that's coming from the coming from its parent class through which it inherits that property the property names are code amount and uh, the three properties code amount and name these are the three properties someone who's used the instance of class they can use this property how we can verify that go to the our html and see if we are using code so if you say code where it's coming from it's coming from this data row and we are extending this data row within our customer okay we are extending this data within our customer model and where we are instantiating this model we are instantiating this model within our component 
we are instantiating this model within our component okay we are instantiating this model within our component right and this is our basic structure is now uh, now everything is set okay so we can we we says that hey we'll instead of having this property within our model we'll create a uh, base class where we are including this property and we already created it so far we are good with it right and now there is a uh, okay right now let's go to our important part so let's go again to the utility so utility right and we have in, okay this is the i grid column okay okay so let's look at our logic okay so let's before we go further let let me show you something so when we hit on the customer customer model get load when we type something here uh, let it be 99 Seven six. My name is letter is Raju, and amount is thousand. And when we are adding it, it appears here, right? The customer appears here. Uh, okay. So because we apply the for each loop here, right? And that we wanted to replace with our custom control. So let's start create our custom control. Okay. So if you go to the utility, I have created a component here, which is my custom control. so when you create a custom control what you need is you need a component which the component should be having a selector because that selector will be used within the component to call call it as its child component okay so uh, right so it will be having a it is a component which will be having a selector so i am naming uh, I, i have name it as a grid ui and a template html template for it okay then what i did is i have defined a two properties grid column and a grid data so what is it so grid columns are nothing but these these columns code name and amount these columns are called as a grid column and what is the grid data this is grid data this these values within that uh, column i called it a grid data and number of columns i called it as a uh, i called it as a uh, grid column now if you looked at the definition of grid column it nothing but a it is nothing but a simple uh, simple string it is nothing but a simple string with a column name right and i enforce it i i mean i created a uh, interface for same as with a column name okay so it just define a column name now collection of it is being used as a grid columns so what is the grid column it's a collection of headers that's it okay what is the grid column mm -hmm. it's a collection of headers so collection mm -hmm. of headers means this first header code is a header name is a header and amount is a header that's mm -hmm. simple so it's a collection of string simply okay and i did it very uh, i mean i use it interfaces to do it to to show you the actual give you a gist of actual programming so when you are going on the project you will also see the same thing so this is the interface which enforces the grid column to implement this column name or this enforce a contract on this grid column which has a column name and then we are using it uh, i mean we are using the grid column collection in our component so you can see the grid column collection or array within our component okay so grid column and what is this grid data it nothing but a data of data row what is our data row code name and amount okay for mm -hmm. which because we we created a an entity or we created a data row which is being used by the customer and the supplier now we can define our grid okay so far with me yes so if you see here in the component what we created because this is very very crucial step so what we did is we created a base class and from using a base class we created a customer class using a base class we created a supplier class now what we are saying that this grid column uh, i mean uh, so that the uh, supplier data and also the uh, customer data can be loaded using this data row why because this data row been extended by the customer model always as the supplier model okay so far with me yes so yes. here grid data is our row it represent our row in a table exactly Hang on. It, it will collect uh, data. Huh? Array, right. array of data. Okay. Right. Right. So row row has this syntax code code name and amount. So we create right. a collection of it. So each and the each both row and amount represent a row. Okay. So let's let's move further. Now when we created it, right? Grid column and grid data. Now it's time to call it. So how to call it? So go to the customer component and go to the customer component HTML. So if we go here. right here we are calling it so we are calling grid ui it's fair enough 
this is a selector yes this is, this is a custom selector right great hyphen right yeah, it's, it's our component oh it's a component okay. okay okay now now you tell me why we use hyphen we have our component and component has a selector we use a selector to call we, we use a selector now this selector is our choice right so we could have given the grid ui but why we given the grid hyphen ui because we have a contract with html that whatever we create in the angular will represent using the hyphen and whatever they create within the html they'll not use a hyphen in that so there is a uh, there is a no name collision being observed right mm -hmm. okay matlab uh, what what I am trying to say, uh, if we rename is at a grid UI, and if also HTML create a, another component called as a grid UI, then our mm. component will go on the toss because when it's try to render it, it always refer to the HTML component and not R. Okay, so that's why we use the hyphen so that HTML HTML has a contract with Angular and other frameworks that if you use a hyphen uh, in your that will be considered as a custom, and I'll not use a hyphen within any of my HTML tag. And that's why we use a hyphen. So this is our this is our selector. So this is our selector. So what is select? Uh, this is our component. So why, how we call the component using a selector? Okay. So we are calling this using a selector. Now this component we wanted to pass a grid column, right? And we wanted to pass a grid data. That's what we define there: grid column and grid data. However, like we discussed, there is a contract, right? So and what is this syntax does? It pass the data from your uh, it uh, it pass the data from your from parent to your component to your uh, no no not parent to child component, yeah, yeah. Component, component to view exactly exactly bang on so this this syntax pass the data from your component to your view right now that's what we did it but there is a hyphen is mandatory because that's what we promised to html that we include the hyphen okay so we what we did grid column and we created a uh, okay let's let's focus on the input first so we created a three input properties grid column grid data and now link. Let's forget the now link for a time being. Let's focus on these two grid column and the grid data. These are the two properties we did it, right? But if you notice here, we have a grid column and grid data like this. Our grid column and grid data is like this. So, what if we include hyphen? It will start complaining because in programming, it's not allowed to create with a hyphen. Okay. So, what we are doing is we are defining the input element, and this include element is a directive which says that, hey, I, I wanted to, I am I am accepting the input from my parent. I am accepting the input from my parent. So far with me. Uh, so in this case, which, which is parent? In this case, where we are calling our component. Customer, right? Customer component. So we, we are calling it within a customer component, right? So we created a grid component, which we are calling within a customer component. So far with me. Yes. Yes. Tough to understand. Hello, everyone. So this is a this is what our customer component, right? So we want the customer to component will become our parent and exactly. the grid is our child children. Exactly. Because we are calling it within, right? Within right. within the HTML. So where when we are calling within the HTML, those components which we call become a child component. And from where we are calling it become a parent component. So far with me? Yeah, yes. Everyone understand that? What is a parent? What is a child? Okay. So this is a child component. And now what we are saying that it has a grid columns. It has a grid columns. Okay. And it has a grid data. These are the two things it has. It has a grid column. It has a grid data. Okay. Now what, what I did here, you can, this is not a correct way, but I hard coded it. In my case, I hard coded it saying that, or you can have a separate property within your component, and you uh, from there you can use. Uh, I mean, you can call it here. Use uh, your component like uh, we are call it uh, customer model, so you can also call it like headers, and you can pass it here. But this is the property I have assigned it. Now this grid column is an input parameter where it is defined. If you go within your component, if you go within grid UI, so where is the grid UI? It's in our utilities. It's in our utility. So if I go to the grid UI and if I go to the component, I, I'll see that we, if I go to the component, I, you can see that this is the exactly mapping. Names are exactly mapping grid columns. And what I'm saying that this is my input parameter. This is my input parameter. And I put it onto a set property where I'm setting my grid column here. So it takes the input. There I say says that, hey, you will be getting a data as an input. And here I define it as a set 
so i can assign whatever the input i am getting i can assign to a property of my angular so what is my property grid column so how do i assign it you are by injecting it uh, the, uh, sorry not injecting it by passing it right so in a set i am passing it this properties and i am defining strongly type of it so what is i am getting is a grid column okay what i am getting is a grid column array of grid column and i am assigning it to the grid column so far with me hello everyone it's difficult to get we will on a setter getter you remember we will on a setter getter within our type script right yes i am not getting as we yeah, grid hyphen input hyphen grid hyphen no worries, no worries we'll go we'll go just give me a minute a minute Sorry for a minute gap. Let's continue. Right. So, you first uh, you notice that this is our customer component. So far, you are with me. Yes. Okay. We are we wanted to show a grid here, right? Within our customer component. Mm -hmm. So you cleared in the part that we go to the utility and we create a separate component called as a grid component. Yes, no, no. I am. That's all. That's all I get it. Right. I got. Right. Let's, 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 let's but this uh, right. input at the at the is grid column hyphen grid column. So mm -hmm. where you have used this in this name? Makes sense. Makes sense. I'm going. I'm going. Then we created the property as a grid column and grid data. So far, also you you understand. It. Everyone yes, also. Right. I mean, along with you, other people who are missed this part, they'll also understand. It. So we created a two properties, right? Yes, these are areas, These yeah. two properties we created. Now mm -hmm. we wanted to. Use this property as an input because we wanted this is a child component of our parent component, and from whatever passed from our parent component, we wanted to assign this these two. Okay, so what we done is that we set this property. Okay, and we say that hey parent, pass me the data, and uh, whatever data you would be passing, I'll be setting to this property. So far you are clear. Forget about this input. So yes, far you are clear. Yes, so far yeah, I have. Set property. Hmm? Yes, I'm clear. Setter, yeah. you are clear, right? Mm -hmm. Then we says that then we attributed using the input grid. Okay, now we name as as a grid column. Then what is this? Uh, what is it directive does? This added input directive. What it does? So if you go to its parent where we are calling our component. So if I go within the HTML, I I'll be using it like this. Yeah. So again, look it carefully. So here, if you look look that grid column here also, I am using the same name. Grid hyphen column, and here I am also using the same name, grid hyphen column. So far with mm. me, yes, so far. And I am yes. saying that this grid column gets a data from component. Okay. 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 Now I got it. Yeah. Okay. Right. And I assign the data input data to it. Now mm -hmm. this direct uh, input directive is smart enough to understand gets a data from the parent and set it to set it to its own component. So far with oh, me, yeah. So yeah, sir. Cool. Now same happen with the customer. So this grid data should be present as an input parameter there. Yes. Let's check. So input we are using as a re for reference actually for referring that. It's yes. a directive. Yes, directive. Right, right. So it has it. It has it. So you can also create a directive. So directive is also a type of components or directive is a it's a special special type of components where you can you can actual change. Uh, you know, I told you the custom directives. Uh, sorry, there are two types of directives. There, uh, I mean, okay. There are three types of directives. Three types of directives, of course. A component, attributal, and a structure. Right, right, right. So there are three types of directive in Angular: attribute directive, structure directive, and component directive. Right, and so this is input and output is also a type of directive. So uh, what what input and output does? Uh, Parent child relationship. Sorry, it's a decorator. It's a decorator. So input decorator. and output is a decorator.
so far so far uh, so far with me so from the parent whenever you pass the data you use the input and output mm -hmm. from child to parent is output right yes so mm -hmm. you, whenever you wanted to pass something from your parent to your child you use you uh, something from a parent to your child you use a input okay. property within your child saying that hey i am accepting a input but when your child is passing something to your parent it says that i am outputting a property to you mm -hmm. Okay, so it's yeah. a uh, that arrow goes like this from child to parent. Okay. Yes. yes. Right. Uh, Ame, uh, as per your uh, code, na, which one is the parent and which one is the child? Okay. Let's let's see. Let's see. So you tell me which how will how you if you are doing Angular programming, what is the child and what is the parent according to you? So there is a there is a let it be there is a HTML which is bind to a component and which is you can able to see it it means that 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 component is being rendered right yes, and that yes. component is calling another component how to yeah. call another component within a component we can uh, create in uh, using selector component. property yes, yes so when we define a component you can be able to see my screen yes when we define a component it has a selector property right yeah. And if you use this grid UI within the HTML, it will load this component within that HTML. Okay. And if you use this selector property within the HTML of other component within the HTML grid UI, this is our selector, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. No, I'm not clear at the HTML with uh, coding things. Okay, so you are from? No, the uh, HTML part. Can you open the HTML? Sure. So, so this is a grid UI, and we want we are calling it right. You, yes. You you are from the HTML CSS, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, great. I thought you are from PHP. Sorry, my bad. So, HTML CSS. Okay, so this is a selector. So we have a grid UI, and when these, when we, if we wanted to load this component within our within a HTML, we will be using this as a HTML tag. So what we are, how we will be using grid UI, and this will get load automatically. This component will load automatically. Okay. Now okay. if we if we use the same tag within the HTML of the other component, then it will get load there. So if I look this HTML, if you look here, grid UI, I'm using right. Yes. So this this will load this component, and it called as, as as it is getting loaded within this component. This component is called as its parent component, and this component is called as its child component. So far with me. Yes, yes, yes I understood. Yes. Everyone understood this, right? Yes. Great. Now this is a parent, and this is a child, right? Okay. Yes. This is this is a parent, and this is a child. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, right. And uh, where where we? Okay, so this is a component. So this is a parent and this is a child. And what we are saying in the child, we 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 say that hey, uh, you are my input property. So what is that mean? That means is that it's getting the value from the parent. And how we define this input property there? So we say that the grid column. And if you notice in our in the HTML of the parent, we are saying the grid column, and we are passing the data to it. So so far with me, you understood it. Yes. Okay. What what is the grid column? Who asked this question? Who is parent and who is child? Ah uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. What's your name? Nandan Nandan Sahu. Nandan Nandan, you clear about right? So this grid column is an input property. Yes. The, yes. Grid data is also input property, and whatever yes. we specify here, uh, this Angular direct you. Directive, which is a internally written, right? We are we haven't wrote it. Angular directive, which is an input, understands it, gets the data, and set it to the property we have given. So we have defined a getter and setter there. Okay. Okay. Here we have defined a getter and setter. So this is a setter where it gets the data and sets it to the grid data. Okay. Okay. And okay. similarly, it does it for uh, grid column, and it also does for the grid data, and also does for the now link. And what we are passing in the now link is nothing but a, a link of it's a routing link that we created. So you you created this routing link. I'll show you. So here, what we are passing a routing link customer 
slash add. So remember, we created this routing link. Yes. Okay. So that's what we are passing it. Now we already created, and there is a three-step process to create a router. You everyone knows this. We I taught you right, and you yes. also created it as assignment. Okay. Yes. Yes. Now this is also done. Now let's let now input property is clear. So let's go and let's play with this input property. Okay. So here within the utility, what I did is once I get this input, I what I got is the grid column and the grid data. What is the end result? I'll be getting the grid column and grid data as my flourish data, or the values within it. Okay. Once I get these input values, what I will uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be, if if I go to my HTML, right? I can use it here. I can use it here. So what I'm doing here, I'm using the ng for to render my column. Grid column, column name, right? It's a collection of column name. So I'll render this is as a TD. What is TD? Table data. Okay, uh, sorry. What is uh, yeah? TD is table data. I should be rendering it as a TS, a table heading. My bad. Hello, I'm getting a background noise, so uh, I request you to please mute. Okay, so this is a table heading from which I'm getting the column name. Okay. And this is I'm rendering in a in a, uh, in a for loop. So I'll first what it does it renders all the column heading. Okay, within a tr. Okay, then what it does it goes into the grid data and it start render the grid the grid data. Everyone looks here this syntax. What is this syntax? It takes a grid data object and it apply indexer on it. Right? Hello. Yes. Yes. Right. So it apply an indexer on it. So let me format this, or it won't get formatted. It won't. So let me enter. Enter. So what it does? It is this syntax where we I say that hey, give me a grid data. So what is the uh, what is the uh, data type of this data row, right? Because we have a grid data as a collection of data row. So this will be a data row, and our data row. If I go within our data row, you will notice that. Okay, I cannot go like this. Let's go like this. Within our data row, we define something like this, right? So we, what we can say, someone when use a syntax like this on a object of a data row, okay? Someone use a syntax like this on an object of data row, he will be giving me a key, and based on that key, I'll be returning him the value. So this key correspond to this code name and the amount. So this code name and amount is a string. and that's what we mention here and whatever we are returning is anything that values of this is string or any number or anything so what if we specify string here it will complain what if we specify string here it will complain to the amount saying that hey amount is a number and you cannot return indexer i mean if someone specify amount you cannot return that someone says that hey obj and here if someone says amount it cannot be returned because it only index a returns a string and i am a number so how to solve this problem is using string or and amount or number okay that will be getting solved now this is error is gone here so far with me right but what is yes. the disadvantage of doing it so consider you are using it as a indexer here right in data row what if you extend this into some other class and which has other properties there also you wanted to use a indexer there is start giving you a problem because there it also you getting a inherit you are extending right so these all these these all everything that is here will be implemented in other class like let it be our customer class which is extending this class all the properties uh, uh, all the prop i mean once he extend it he can use the all the properties let it be he, ha he has a own property which return the object okay in that case it start complaining again saying that hey i can only return a string and number when you apply an indexer so that's why we define a any here to solve the confusion i define a any here so this is the only only best use of any i can say but avoid the using of any in your project you should be always using a strongly typed as far as becoming your programming skills concern you will be using a strongly typed don't use any but this is the best place where you can find there are some best places you can find when you start doing the programming where you identify it where you can use any anyway so let's move further so this is this is our customer grid where we loop it again and we says that hey i wanted to use this 
where i'll be i'll be saying that hey someone given me a code uh, from the data i'll be i'll be fetching the code amount and what not and what not which is grid column i'll be fetching it from the from the here and its value i'm printing here so here grid columns are nothing but the properties and their values uh, i need as a grid data so that's why i'm printing here so let me format this again right so that's what i'm doing here and after that then there is a selector method will come this part later now this part till this part you are clear yes now yeah, what, one confusion is there go to the grid template what that keys holds is attribute uh, grid template okay uh, yeah. are you saying the html uh, no no on component on a component grid component okay yes where is it mm -hmm. not here i think you have written inside our uh, customer component customer component that key the key elements you have written we have oh 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 oh, oh, oh that's get you get you so that's we are in common model so in the common yes, model yes. this is ha ha here, here nothing here. but everything this everything the okay so what is our class usually what is everything in the javascript it is object so when you create a object in javascript uh, right you said we obg everything in javascript is a object okay so this is my object so what is object contain so usually javascript call is object contain key and the value key so, value pair right so this key refer to the properties simple the property name so this key refer to the property name code Not name code and amount. Key and amount is clear but the first one key is string and any which line this line right. why so we have written like this only why why we use it actually okay so this key refer to the code i said right the code name and the amount right is our string right right so that's why i said string yes that's clear okay now let it be what if we specify the here also string okay so if we specify here the string so this start complaining because what it why he start complaining i tell you because this he says that hey i written in i am a type of number or i written in my value is a number though i may uh, you know here what it says that hey let let you create a object and its value is the number right its value yeah, and we cannot access by number it should right. simply accepts here right so what we do if we say the number it will start working okay my bad i i have to use or operator if we say a number it start working now you understand so string yes. and number yes okay. so why we use a any because it might be extended by some other person other there is, huh, mm -hmm. and there he has its own property and you know it start complaining again that own property will start complaining again so that's yeah. why we use any yeah. so far with me yes yes Right, and now this is being used here. So we just wanted to use this code. That's why we define it uh, there. So this is the indexer we use, where we say the column name, which is we get it from here, the column name, and we use this column name to uh, uh, to get the. I mean, here from we what we get is uh, amount, uh, code name. That key we get it from there, and their value is being printed here. And this is like uh, like we see it's go uh, it's its object is a data row, so it print print for all the rows, right? So far you are with me. So it it you can get a data, okay here. So once it getting passed, and right, and that's what and if if you looked it here, so this is the okay. Let's let's look in the HTML. So uh okay. So here here the we are saying that in the customer model it's pass the customer model, right? it passed the customer model and how why the customer model gets converted to the customer model is of type customer right but why the customer model gets converted to the data row because because the customer is inherited from the data row and that it both has the same property so it does the mapping based on the similar properties and pass the similar property to its to its child component to its child component that is our grid okay Wait, can I ask one thing? Sorry. Yeah, please, please. Uh, can you go to the HTML one? Table, table one. Table one, table. Sure, sure. Why not? So for line number three to five, we have created the grid column. Okay, for this is for dynamic purpose, right? 
no no we have uh, we we have a two right so basically if you looked at our component we have a two properties grid column and the grid data what is grid column it's nothing but a table heading right yes. table headings so these table headings what how they represent it is a string collection of string right so okay. grid column is has a string column name and mm -hmm. to create a column name collection we define it like this column name collection here sorry okay okay here. and that means first first 3 to 5 line for uh, heading purpose and others should be body means the table right, body right yes. right and it has a data row right so to fetch this these these are uh, to fetch this key or fetch this property what we say is that hey our uh, we we pass header as a code name and amount right our yes. header is code name and amount so what we did is here if you looked into the html our header is code name and amount so what we did is we say that hey uh, this all header of we are also looping through the header we are taking a code and fetching it from here we are taking a amount and fetching it from here so that's why we have wrote a two for loop if you notice one is for the tr and one is for the td so this td so, is... yes uh, so my i have also a question just mm. i want to know so if, if you go to that uh, model the model come on more. yes so you you have uh, initialized that amount the number is equal to 0 okay Mm. So if we not initialize, it will it work? No, because what is the class? You have to do something initialization, right? In class, you have to initialize something. But in case of key, you have written same, and in, in interface it is same. It, you have not initialized. So yeah. how that is working? Because that is an indexer, right? This is this is a special special type of indexer. That's oh, what that it will, okay, okay. So we don't have to initialize this, right? Right, key? right, right. Oh, in, in place of key, we can write anything. In place of key, or you have to write key only. In case of key, we have to write key because that's the object of JavaScript. No. Agrees that JavaScript says that hey, my every property is a key and its value is a key because everything in JavaScript is object. So we are sticking to the fundamental of JavaScript. Right. Okay, okay. But uh, so mm -hmm. I understand one thing. Uh, just go to the grid HTML page. Yes, please. Uh, so here, like we are uh, renting all the header using like uh, the grid column actually. Mm -hmm. But uh, we can like directly uh, mention all the header here. So is there any advantage to do like this? Yeah, because currently we are having a three header. What if we are having a four header? So this is being injected to us, right? This is also input property, which is being injected by the customer. So let it be customer comes with a four header, he'll be injecting us the four header. So anyways, like we are passing statically from the uh, uh, like customer uh, view actually. If you go to the customer view, we are passing the heading uh, heading name from there actually. Exactly. The, so anyway, we are like uh, passing the header name statically. So makes sense. So we can uh, uh, we can put yeah, yeah actually sense. we can we could, use create in any component and we can pass any data to it and it will create the different table for different anyway we can reuse this grid ui and we can pass different data and it will create accordingly table so due to the re usability we can use is that correct Amir? right that's correct but like you mentioned we could have used within it but as a base coding practices we, we ask them to pass so that everything is generic so it's its value depend on whatever we pass and not what is hard coded. Okay. Who is asking this? Any question? And uh, like uh, in any case, like uh, we have five headers, but in the same case, uh, like we have to hide two headers and display the uh, data of three. Uh, column actually on that case so where uh, like we need to write the logic issue okay so in that case we should be exposing a property uh input property called as a hidden uh hide my rows and number of rows that is also a list which contains the number of uh, columns which we wanted to hide and then comparing that that column if that column name is same name and then hiding that tr using if condition in gf Okay, so that could solve the problem. And if someone's someone's removed it from there, so this is this all things can be possible. So if you wanted to play with it, 
I hope that I'll be sending you a code. So today is, I believe, we will be covering all the eight chapters. So it's fine. I'll send you a code so you can play with it and you can try to hide them or do something or that you like to do. So that logic should be inside our like uh, uh, view uh, where like we iterate the. We will be right here in the component. Here you will be doing it. So you will okay. be creating a hidden property, and based on that you will be creating an array. Sort of there are multiple ways of doing it, but it's better you have a property here and through which you expect accept which column you want to hide, and based on that you can hide it, or you can say that there is a hidden icon, and who clicks on that icon you can. Uh, uh, I mean, you can on click event handler. You can write it in this HTML where you can create another TD and you said hide is my let it be. You create another TD and in an anchor tag, you said that this is my this name is hide the row, hide my row entire row. If you wanted to hide the row, and then you you can do this everything and hide my row sort of that. And based on that, you can just hide your row. This is also possible. Okay, got it. So it is basically the resilient purpose. So so that like uh, every uh, table can use that code actually. Exactly, exactly. So you you need to do it whatever the common functionality you wanted to give it to the developers of a uh, customer and supplier. You will be writing within a custom component. So all the common functionality, like if you go to the WebEx grid, they have a lot of common functionality offered to everyone who will be using the WebEx grid. If you go to the WebEx grid, they'll be having n number of functionality, and that's why this is popular. It's a paid actually. People pay. I mean, the company pays the subscription for it to get this data. Uh, where is this resource? As well, the images demo. Let's go to the demo. So WebEx is a library. It's a library, so we can use it in both Angular and React, right? It's a Node package, yes. Node package you can use oh, it. Node anywhere. package, okay. Oh, it's a Node package. The Node package you can use it anywhere. So anyway, so this these are the different functionality offered by Vue demo. There is there is many. I see many many a oh, lot of libraries in the project like this. Take it. These are the grid that I created. And if you notice that if you create it, it brings it on the left hand side, and it it accesses the millions of rows, so it loads the millions of data. So for let it be for a student till the tenth grade from K to K twelve, whatever grade he gets can be represented in a grid where you have the first year, second year, third year, what not and what not. Anyway, or you can I mean. right so right so let's let's stick to the pro topic so yeah so we created the input property and input property rendering the things okay now you use the input property here right so you get the grid so, so far you understand right our our code is able to able to give create a grid here so if i enter something uh, hey 9978 and name is amay and value is let it be 100 and add So it like gets added as a grid. Okay, it's added as a grid. So far we have seen this part only. So far we have seen this part only. So let's let's see what this select button is doing. Okay, so I added a select button here. Let's see what says this select button is doing. So if I go, so here I, he, this is just for a demo purpose. So I just uh, wanted to demo you the output. That's why I coded like this. But you can do a much more thing using a select. I just what I did is if you just select, I'll show you first. If you just select. It brings the data. So let it be. If I wanted to add nine and change the person name to Raju, I add. So Raju is getting added. Select this. Raju is selected. Am I selected? Raju, am I? Okay. Customer code is not getting selected. There is some problem, or I might have changed something here and there while into doing demoing these things. Anyway, but nevertheless, let's move on. Uh, and see how the selectors are, output is working so here what is what is what we are doing actually data from here we are passing to our parent data from child data from our grid component we are passing to the customer component okay data from child we are passing it to the customer component and that is called as the output so what what output does within a child or output does within a grid 
great data it passed to the customer so what is great great is a child customer is a parent so from child it passed the data to the parent it's called the output so if i go yeah. here and there is a output and its name is grid selector okay so what is how the flow happens i'll explain you let, let's look at the code first let's syntax, look at the syntax so i said that hey output is a grid selector or selected okay and then there is a emitter uh, so event emitter okay event emitter you can you need to import it from angular code okay once you import the event emitter class from the angular code it asks you what you want to emit so i am saying that i wanted to emit the data row okay so this event emitter here i said that i wanted to emit the data row right and this is a event emitter then there is a uh, then there is a getter property which is, i i'll come to this so this is a property right so um, i have a question hmm. so we have to write those uh, means uh, code uh, right after that output decorator if i put that output uh, decorator somewhere else uh, if uh, above inputs it will not work right it will not work it tells uh, output decorator so decorator you decorate on top of it on top so, of it okay right our so, component is also a decorator so but we are in component uh, we have that uh, means uh, curly brushes but in output we don't have need, need, need those curly brushes no no it, it, different decorator works differently right so if i go to the component uh, component this is a component so this is our component so you 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 pass it this is a this is you are passing the you know the constructor of the component you are passing this value mm -hmm. the constructor of a component takes an object so if you go here okay, okay. it mm -hmm. takes an object okay it takes an object and that's what you are doing you are passing an object where you are passing the selector and template but if you looked at this output object uh, output decorator it just accepts a string it doesn't accept an object and we have to write the uh, immediate uh, means code below this output right right Similarly. immediate code below this like, like this is this is not all right you first declare this you are thinking different way right so what you need to do is first declare this and then add a decorator on top of it for this event emitter what you are saying first i'm writing output and then i'm writing event emitter it's yes. not like that first you are writing event emitter means uh, let, let's go with our component also so first you are writing a class and then you say that this class is a component using a uh, hmm, decorator that, that i got it but just uh, if we uh, play uh, means uh, cut this output decorator and separate place it somewhere else means if below this it will not work right it will not work these decorators are being used like this in every programming languages not just in the javascript or not just in angular but in other programming languages also you can see kind of a decorator which is nothing but a pre or post processing logic which is being used where what is the pre processing whenever the control comes to this event emitter the this logic is executed first this logic, whatever the logic, return logic within the output is executed first. Okay. So if we keep that uh, this output, uh, that output uh, over the input uh, decorator, it will not also not work, right? Not work, and it's not recommend to do that. Okay. I never tried it, but it mm -hmm. never, it's not recommend to do that because okay. that's what that's what its basics being fundamentally being established. So you, when you say the decorator, you should be putting the decoration on top of it. Let okay. it be if you want to decorate your house, you will be put the decoration within your house, right? Not the outside mm -hmm. of your house, right? Okay. Or not mm -hmm. the neighboring house. So similar way, we, we put a decorator on top of it. So it's a, it's a, uh, it's a said rule that it should follow like this. Okay. Got it. Okay. So this is the event emitter. This is the event emitter. And even uh, this is the event emitter. This is the event emitter. I mean, this is the property name event emitter where we say that it is of type the event emitter, which we, uh, which we imported from the, which we imported from the uh, core, Angular core. Okay. And here we say that, hey, this event emitter is of type data row. Event emitter is of, uh, of type data row. Okay. And what we say is that, hey, this event emitter of type data row. Till that point, you understand, right? Now let's look at the HTML. So if you looked here in the HTML, what we say is that, hey, when the user clicks on this select button, he, he will be firing a click event. So from when you click the event, the data, the object, this data is being passed to the selected grid, right? And this is selected grid is nothing but a base function. So it gets a data of data row. How it get the data? You so far with me. So here we created a simple link, select anchor tag, where what we say is someone clicks here, he will be getting the this object. Okay, because it's within the for loop. So when it's render, it's, it's it has a context of this, right? So it gives you him the 
column object. So it, what is a column object? It's nothing but a grid data. Or in our case, it is the data row, right? It's our case, it's a data row that we are passing it to it. So that's how so someone clicks here. So this is a uh, event binding. Or in simple terms, how we learn that when we use this syntax, we pass the data from our view to component. Okay. So it passes the data from view to the component. So it passes this data to this select grid. Okay. And select grid function get a data. Once it get a data, what we do that we use this event emitter and we emit this value. Okay. We emit this value. Okay. Yes. Now when we emit this value, who gets it? Emit it means what is the emit of normal events? It's giving, right? It gives the that value. It output that value. It returns that value. Who gets it? This yeah, emitted that. value is gets by because right. Let's 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 take a step by step. When we go to the HTML, this emitted value, this emitted value is being received to the by this function. Select uh, select customer. This function. So far with me, this emitted value, how this emitted value will be received by the select function because that is what we said here. So this grid selected is bind to selected customer. And when we use this syntax, what we do? We pass the data from HTML to component, right? So it gets the data to this component and it gets that value. But when it gets that value, that is of type data row, right? Because that will emit it. Yes. But these components require a customer object. So what I did is I write a mapper. So I created a customer object and I mapped the property amount to the amount of customer code to the code of the customer name to the name of the customer and then I flourish this property customer. Okay. So far with me. Yes. Yes. Great. Uh, I mean, uh, one thing uh, whenever you will use the anchor tag means uh, link na, that oh. time also you will create the select uh, customer object, right? I did not get your question. Could you please repeat it? What purpose we are using the select customer object? Means whenever we will use the anchor tag, that time also we will use the output uh, and select no, customer. Could you please break your customer? Break for let go. Ask me to go to the screen which you wanted to know. So, uh, my question is, why are you using the select customer object? Why I am using a select customer object? Yes. Where is the select customer object? Are you hearing me? Tell me. Which select customer object? Okay. Yeah. Which file is that? Customer. Customer file is that. Its the customer object. Yes. Yes. Customer component. Yes. 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 Function okay, select function. Yeah, select customer. Ah, yeah. Right, right. I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Let, let's take a pause. Let's take a pause. So basically, if you look to the HTML, we emitted. So you 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 are you you were with me, right? When we emitted the thing. So if you go to the component, what we do is we define the output. Here we define the output, right? Then what mm -hmm. we do is if we go to the our HTML, there we define a link. Okay. And mm -hmm. what we say is that hey link. Whenever someone clicks on you, okay. Whenever someone clicks on the select, you need to give a data row to this function. So far with me. Yes. So this select grid, right, is a function which gets this row, data row. Now what we do is we use this event event emitter and we emit it. That data row, what we get is we emit it. What is mean by emitting? Returning it or giving it. Okay, it emits it. Now once it emitted, it is the output, right? So it, this emitted value goes to where? So this is a grid select, uh, grid selected. Okay, grid selected. So far with me, its name is this output name is grid selected. So if you if you looked into this view, there is a grid selected being defined, and it's it's mapped to which function? Select uh, select customer. Okay. So whatever the value we emit, it goes to which function? Select customer. So there is a specific special keyword being used, dollar event, which send this emitted value. Sorry, the, I missed this. So there is a specific keyword being used, dollar event, which send this emitted value to this function, selected customer. Okay. And what we emit is what we emitted is the grid data, right? 
Yes. So far with me? Are you sure you understand this? I understand. Hello, who asked this question? Nandan, so. Nandan, you understand this? Still no. confusion. We can go again. Still complex. Oh, no worry. No worry. This is this is a bit complex. So uh, do you understand till this part, right? I'll I'll also explain in Hindi. This is okay. So basically, what happened? Yeah, par ek anchor tag hai. Barabar? Hmm. Ye anchor tag pe koi anchor tag pe kya hota hai? Ki anchor tag pe jaake click kar sakte hai. Barabar? So hmm. koi bhi anchor tag pe click karega. To yahan par ham logon ne click ka ek event define kiya. Wo bola ki kisi ne click kiya to bhai ye select grid ko jaake tu ye data de de. Okay. Ah. Abhi hmm. ye select grid ko data dene jayega. To ye select grid ka function kaha par define hai? Yahan par define hai. Ye kya hai? Apna component hai grid ka. Ah. ठीक है तो इसको डेटा आएगा ठीक है अभी ये इवेंट इमीटर क्या है ये हम लोगों ने एक आउटपुट करके प्रॉपर्टी डिफाइन करके रखी है डेकोरेटर आउटपुट करके डिफाइन करके रखा है बराबर यहाँ okay. तक है जिसका टाइप क्या है डेटा रो तो उस इवेंट बोलो जब डेटा लेके आएंगे तो वो हम लोग ने ये आउटपुट यूज करेंगे राइट दैट टाइम तभी हम लोग ने ये आउटपुट यूज करेंगे और ये फंक्शन जो यूज किया है उसके लिए यूज करेंगे जो डेटा लेके आया ना वहां से ग्रिड देखो एक स्टेप बाय स्टेप जाओ मेरे को बताओ तुमने को ये समझा क्या कि वो लिंक पे क्लिक हो गया और वहां से डेटा यहां तक आ गया हां वो समझ में आ गया अभी आ, मेरा है ये डिबग भी करके देखते हैं डिबग भी करना बताता हूं मैं हम लोग डिबग भी करके देखेंगे ठीक है यहां तक एक मिनट स्टेप बाय स्टेप जाओ आपका क्वेश्चन है मैं वैलिड कर मैं मानता हूं वो क्वेश्चन को छोड़ दो ये जो है ना उसके फोकस करो यहां तक डेटा आ गया फिर उसने क्या किया कि ये इवेंट इमीटर प्रॉपर्टी पहले से अपना डिफाइन था बराबर इसका नाम है ग्रिड सिलेक्टेड बराबर तो उसने क्या किया ये इमिट किया डेटा और ये इमिट किया यहाँ पर इवेंट इमिटर को लेके इमिट किया अभी ये क्या करेगा ये जो ग्रिड आउटपुट जहां पर डिफाइन है ना उधर वो डेटा लेके जाएगा तो ये आउटपुट कहां पर डिफाइन है तो ये यहाँ पर डिफाइन है एस्टीमल के अंदर तो यहाँ पर वो डेटा लेके आ गया और यहाँ पर हमने क्या बोला कि इसको बाइंड कर दे सिलेक्टेड कस्टमर के साथ सिलेक्ट कस्टमर के साथ वो जो आएगा ना डेटा उसको इसको दे दे सिलेक्ट कस्टमर को दे दे वो कैसे बोला अपन ने तो यहाँ पर एट द रेट इवेंट है ना उसके अंदर वो डेटा हमेशा पड़ा होता है तो वो जो इवेंट है एट द रेट इवेंट उसको लेके हम लोगों ने सिलेक्टर कस्टमर को पास कर दिया सिलेक्ट कस्टमर को पास कर दिया ओके ओके ये डॉलर इवेंट पैरामीटर है पैरामीटर का टाइप राइट राइट और ये डॉलर इवेंट का वैल्यू है ना ये एंगुलर खुद ही देता है उसको इसलिए वो रिजर्व है एंगुलर को खुद पता होता है कि डॉलर इवेंट का वैल्यू क्या है आउटपुट के बेसिस पे मतलब आउटपुट जो इमिट करता है ना वो डॉलर इवेंट के अंदर चला जाता है और वो डॉलर इवेंट इसको पास करता है ये एंगुलर खुद ही करता है अभी अभी समझ में आया हाँ अभी समझ में आया ग्रेट तो ये सो इट गेट्स अ डेटा व्हाट एवर बी आउटपुट दैट डेटा इज गिवन टू दिस सिलेक्ट कस्टमर ओके एंड इफ यू क्लिक ऑन दिस सिलेक्ट कस्टमर इट गेट्स दैट डेटा रो नाउ वंस इट गेट्स अ डेटा रो राइट हाउएवर दिस सिलेक्ट कस्टमर अंडरस्टैंड द कस्टमर इट डजंट अंडरस्टैंड द डेटा रो सो व्हाट आई डिड इज आई जस्ट क्रिएटेड द इंस्टेंस ऑफ कस्टमर क्लास एंड आई अजाइन द वैल्यूज हियर ओह ओके दिस इज कॉल्ड एज अ मैपर ओके ओके अंडरस्टूड यू विल यू विल हां ओके दिस इज कॉल्ड एज अ मैपर एंड द मेथड हु मैप्स इट कॉल्ड हाइड्रेटेड मेथड ओके हाइड्रेट मेथड सो यू विल यू विल हर्ड दिस वर्ड इन द प्रोग्रामिंग एंड यू विल गेट अ कंफ्यूज बट डोंट गेट कंफ्यूज दिस इज वेरी सिंपल टर्म्स सो व्हेन यू हियर इट यू कंसीडर दैट देयर इज अ टू ऑब्जेक्ट बीइंग मैप्ड कॉल्ड एज अ मैपर एंड दोज हु डू डू दिस मैपिंग थिंग यूजुअली कॉल्ड एज अ हाइड्रेट मेथड ओके सो ये सिलेक्टेड कस्टमर है ओके नाउ दिस दिस ओके यहां पर इसको डेटा मिल गया नाउ दिस डेटा बी अजाइन टू द कस्टमर मॉडल सो दिस इज अ कस्टमर मॉडल एंड दिस कस्टमर मॉडल इज बीइंग यूज्ड विद इन द एचटीएमएल ओके दिस कस्टमर मॉडल इज बीइंग यूज्ड विद इन द एचटीएमएल माय बैक राइट राइट दिस कस्टमर कोड कस्टमर नेम एंड ऑल द स्टफ ओके एंड दैट्स हाउ दिस डेटा बीइंग डिस्प्ले ऑन आवर एचटीएमएल पेज ओके सो व्हेन आई क्लिक ऑन द सिलेक्ट इट्स बीइंग डिस्प्ले देयर So far with me? Yes, yes, yes. So when I'm clicking on select, it's being displayed there, right? And that's yes. how we completed our, uh, right? That's how we completed. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, that's how we completed our creation of our custom control. So anyone wanted to go try? I mean, do you wanted to try it? Someone wanted to share or try to do it right now? or should we proceed and so you will try to do it after the lecture
yes i will do it after the lecture so okay. we will take them my yeah, time we will take time the entire day and we have to go for a monday or uh, extend the session by one day hmm. uh, anyway so if some okay so let's let's do it after the lecture so let's go with the second chapter everyone fine with it or someone wanted to try it right now simran we can move it we can move right okay just give me a minute i'll take a minute pause and we'll back i'll back yes so let me keep you waiting so yeah we will we are starting very interesting thing now we are starting something called as a uh, very important part of any programming language is to get the data from the database okay so for that what we'll do we'll create a fake server so json server is a fake server i'll let's teach you something here so json server is a fake server whenever in your project if you wanted to perform any unit testing against the data it's not recommend to call the database production database or uat database or whatever so it's better because you will be putting that value and no one will be using when you are doing the testing you will be putting the value within the database and no one will be using it so it is better to uh, better to stick with a uh, i mean it's better to uh, better to have a fake server so you can use this json server as a fake server so how to install it just to do the npm i json server it will install the everything okay you just need to do the npm i uh, npm install json server so if i if you copy this and you perform in your project project or minus minus dev is recommended because this is a dev dependency don't you want to push it on production for any reason so minus minus dev uh, is hyper append dev is recommended and so that the uh, it gets installed on your uh, uh, i mean it gets ins installed as a dev dependency but for this uh, demo purposes we can use the npm i json server as an installer i mean we can use the it it as a install it as a normal uh, normal i mean i mean yeah we can go with the npm i json server installation for our demo purposes so i'll show you what i mean by so if you go to your package.json so this this is a dependency and this is a dev dependency right so what i am trying to say that this json server is a part of your dev dependency and not part of your dependency and it should be installed as a dev dependency okay and once you install the json server you can go through the documentation of json server and you can realize that how to configure it further so if you uh, based on that i have configured it so there are simple commands being used so if i scroll up this is the this is the command that's being used json server minus minus watch db json port 3000 So basically what it does it uses this db json as a database and it create uh, it uses the db json and you, if you if you install the json server you will notice that there are lot of other things here so you can simply delete it and you, whatever here you can delete it because it's considered as a database okay it's create it uses json database so you can delete it and in my case we are dealing with a customer so i created a customer array and in that i put at the random values this id is a mandatory for this json server to understand the data uh, understand any entity so for this entity uh, has a this entity is a array which has the each item for which the id is mandatory code name and amount is used for our project purposes so i added them code name and amount okay and i hard coded these values for time being 
we can put it from the our application also so so far with me yes okay so if you go to your package or json you will see the server and there you need to configure it like this json server and watch 3000 so if you do the npm server uh, npm run server it will create the json server for you so let me go to the terminal we require two terminal in our this for this so uh, json server will be installed locally if i install with the i or you have, we have to install globally it's it's not i mean i i don't prefer to install it globally because okay. you will be installing as a dev dependency right so for this project everyone who wants to use this project should be able to do use the json server on their local so okay. install so, it as a dev dependency so it will install in this folder right yes. Right, so you will get the dev dot uh, db dot json here, hmm. and I'll show you how to check it. Why you wanted to install it globally? Because for other projects also. Yes, yes. But that will be uh, restricted your machine, right? Hmm. So every time I can install locally um, on that project also, right? Right. If if I need to test. Right. You need to test it. You install a dev dependency. That's fine. So every and you push it into a git. So everyone who downloads it, they do the npm i, they'll get this JSON server on their machine. And then when they do the npm mm -hmm. serve, uh, server, they'll they spamming the instance of the JSON server. So let me do that. npm run, npm vr server, enter. It will create a JSON server object. I'll show you how it looks like. Right? I'll recommend everyone to try on their machine immediately along with me. I try to do NPM server. Oh, I should be within the okay. So I'll be having my packages and within customer of our project. So I'll uh, I'm outside of the project. Okay, so you see that it started on the 3000 port because we are specified to start it on the 3000. This is a JSON server where you can, using a customer, you can use this method get, post, put, delete. The documentation is there if you wanted to go for it. And uh, yeah, so this is simple JSON server. Is this is customer that I created? Customers that I created. You can choose to create whatever you like. But for our project, it's better to create a customer. And if you wanted to go ahead, you can create a supplier, and you can call a gate, post, put, and delete. So if what? How to see customers? So slash yes, customers. Definitely, it should give me the value. No, it's not giving customer to customer. Not sure. So let me go to the JSON. And after this, it's 
it started giving me the value within from my json right when i'm doing the get call so far with me yes okay so let's let's try to use this server within our application and let's do the http call now we will be, we are on very crucial part so please listen to this part carefully so you in your project you can start doing the http call and start getting the data because that's what the bread and butter of every developer if they if they can do the http calls i mean if they can do the http calls get the data show it on the ui that's what expected most anyway so let's move on to the src there is a customer app within the customer app there is a utility right so i'll be having this intersector but i'll not go through it okay so it's directly the customer okay so i'll go to the customer app okay so i'll tell you uh, okay so here we are also also looking into the on init uh right cycle hook because i i modify my project accordingly that i shouldn't be using the hooks into my project okay that's what i i do it but now in this case it's mandatory to use it i can still avoid it but i'll i'll use it for uh, our our sake of understanding so let's let's go view and let's go let me go to the terminal okay so this is let me create another terminal let me run this TV, it, and then there is a customer application CLI. Yeah. to start my application. Okay, so let's start looking at it. So this is this is here. Okay, so I am using the so how to make a HTTP call. Anyone aware about it? What what? Uh, what service we need to use? Uh, HTTP service. Right. And what is the model for it? Mm -hmm. HTTP client module. Exactly. Bang up. So we will be using the HTTP client model. Okay. HTTP client model is launched in Angular 6. Before that, there is a HTTP module. And after that, there is a new model comes that HTTP client model, which solves the uh, JSON conversion problems that faced by the developers or Angular developers being solved in the there is a uh, HTTP client model, so we we are not looking at the HTTP because there is I I don't think there will be any project which is still in the Angular four or Angular two or Angular three. Everyone is using Angular ten and fifteen because Angular component modification is very easy. You can easily do it, and in just you, when you modify to the new version, it's only the optimized code that you get. The very less change into the functionality. Okay, so ah okay, so let's let's start using it. So there is a HTTP module that is being used. So I have registered it within the customer. Okay, I will reload it, right? So this is the HTTP module. I have used it from the Angular common slash HTTP. And okay. So this is the HTTP module I have imported. I, I have imported here. So what is this import? This is a TypeScript import. So where where it import from? These import import from the our node module. Okay. And once it imported from the node model, how the uh, Angular understand about it? So in your ng model, uh, in you in your ng module, what you do? You do another import where you say that whatever you wanted to import from uh, from the Angular, right? And you specify this HTTP client model here, okay? And once you specify this HTTP client model, we can able to use it. Now, which class within which service within the HTTP client model we wanted to use? So if I go to the component, I'll be using the HTTP client to do the HTTP calls. So I'll say that the Angular common dot HTTP has a service name HTTP client. Okay, once I get this service, I'll be using my injector, injector, right? And this is the this we see we know that this is private by default, right? 
here we someone asked me a question i don't remember his name but someone asked me a question why we are using underscore here because it's private by nature but here we wanted to define the http as our public because uh, we can directly use it in in our code using this dot these dot http c we can directly use it okay so that's why i defined it a public you can still define a private and uh, but yeah so you injected here your dependency and you save it as a public so this is the http c okay and if we if i go down right so i have created a post method so i have created a post method okay so what this post method does it it takes a it takes a data row or it creates the object of a data row okay this is disable true ignore it this you ignore it for time being not important uh, so the, we i have created the object of the data row then what i did is uh, whatever in the customer model right whatever in the customer model i assign it to this uh, right map it to this dto okay why we require a dto right uh, so basically what we wanted to do is in the post we wanted to save the code name and amount in the database so far you are with me that's what post is about to so if i go here within my application right and if i try uh, if i if i type something if i type something sorry if i type something and click on send to the server it should go to the server right so that's why i need to read this property okay i wanted to send it to the server however if you know if you note that whatever we have is our model right and our model is customer model so our customer model will be also having form custom group okay uh, uh form custom group that we have and we also have a different validations here so do you do we wanted to save this validation also within our database yes and no 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 so we just wanted to save only the data right and that's why we create the dto which maps to your actual entity or actual database okay so why we create a dto your dto is nothing but a object orm orm what object relational mapping where your dto will map with your actual table data and you you can pass it to your orm or you can pass it to the function who is storing that to in the their database so that's why we use the dto so i am created a dto here right so in the post i have created a simple uh, simple class so in our case it's a data row is our dto right because it, it's a simple class which having the code name and amount okay so i am creating it object of it and i am saying that the code is equal to this name is equal to this amount is equal to this then i am using this dot http c why i can use this dot http c because i define it a public right i inject it as my dependency and define it a public in a constructor what we do we inject our dependency and only the dependency is allowed to inject in the constructor uh, constructor no other things are allowed to do it within the constructor so far with me yes so you 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 injected your dependency that is httpc within your constructor right and you are using post method of the httpc so it what httpc offers so if i go and so your these dot httpc dot get post put is all things offer here right mm -hmm. so i am creating i am using and what is this httpc hello everyone please answer what is this httpc http client yes right? yeah instance of object right and this http clients uh, this http client service comes from there it comes from the http client module yes okay which we define within our module right mm -hmm. uh, so you got the link so we in the, in our module we define the http client module right and this yes. client model provide us a service which name is http client now we injected this service here it, uh, and we given it a name as httpc as a public and so, then uh, here I, we are also have to import that http client module right uh, no, we just need to import it once okay so okay in this construct uh, okay okay why we what is this import typescript import right and how mm. the angular know about this module because uh, uh, this is a typescript import and how the angular know about this using the angular import so where is the angular import we do within the module 
So every class which is declared within this module, every uh, every component, sorry, my bad, I use the wrong word here. So every component which declares right within our module can have this import. Mm can use this import or all the functionality provided by these import however okay but why, so why is here we are importing in this module here we are importing modules exactly, and, exactly. Uh, in component we are importing services Sir, okay service. okay why we call service because you don't need to create an instance of it right you, you are creating a service and you are injecting it mm -hmm. this yeah, is yeah, client is a service it mm -hmm. gives us a serve something right so you you import this service and this service, and you create a you are an object to it. You inject your service, right? You can directly you directly if it's class, you you need to create an object. Without that, you cannot directly inject it, right? But here the service you can directly inject like this. Yes. Anyway, I wanted to show you something there, but it's fine. Okay, so let's not create a confusion. So the, here, this is a HTTP client, right? And which is object is HTTP C. Now you use the HTTP C dot post dot get, right? Dot post dot get method. So you, I'll be using the post method where I'll be specifying my URL and my route. So far with me? Yes. And I'll be giving object of my DTO object, okay? And that's it. That's done the problem. It posted the thing. Okay. However, what we want is that once the post completed, okay, once the post completed, we wanted to run success method where we wanted to check if the data is posted correctly or not. Mm -hmm. So what, what we do, we subscribe to it because it returns an observable. These methods return an observable. Yes. So that's why we subscribe to it. Now observable has a two syntax like like uh, observable has a two two observable except two function. First is a success and second is an error. First is a success and second is an error. So we define a success function. This observable has a two function. It accepts a two function. So if I just show you the definition of subscribe method, it has a two function. First is a success and another one is an error. So in this success, what we are doing is we are passing the uh, response that whatever response we are getting from this post, we are passing this to the success. Okay. And within this success, within this success, we are calling the server again. Within this success, we are calling the server again. And we, we are calling the server again that let it be. If we are put it something into the server, we wanted to get a data again, right? So because we wanted to show it on the UI. So that's why we are calling it again using the get method. Okay, using the same HTTP object, HTTP uh, that we have injected. We are calling a get method, then we are doing a subscribe again. And here, whatever we get, this also takes a two, a two parameters, success and failure. So whatever we get here in the success, right? We, what we are, we get, we convert it into the data row because that's what that, that is. The JSON can be easily converted into the data row because that's what we store. Okay. So we are converting into a data row. Then in the success method, what we have done is we have used the mapper DTO to DTO to our uh, mod model mapper. So whatever we get is DTO, right? Data transfer object, or it is nothing but a data row. So we are mapping a data row to customer, mapping a data row array to the customer array. So far you are with me. Difficult to get it. Yes, little bit, little bit difficult. Okay, so let's let's go with very simple. Let's let's scratch everything. Let's go from again, right? So we go to the point. You reverse back little bit, okay? We go to the point that we inject the HTTPC. So far with me, which is the HTTPC, uh, which is which is the HTTP client? Yes. yes. And how we injected using here, right? Using the import. Okay, yes. we imported it. This is type mm -hmm. import where we tell we tell them that hey, we wanted to use this service and we injected it so far yes. with me yes, right yes. now we use the http client we use the for this http client we use the httpc public method and then we say that the httpc dot post and other stuff but that we can do it 
however we are not posting anything okay we declare it now we wanted to get the data that is there here that we hard coded so this data we hard coded right everyone everyone with no, no, me uh, um am i can you uh, go to little bit we are means uh, previous you know, the post method go to the post method so no don't don't go to the post method let's focus on the get method first okay because post is you you are trying to, you are not able to get the post right let's first understand the get method so we are so, not posting anything no we are not posting anything so we are loading this page and we wanted to see these two things here right we can able to right you got look right so how we can able to see that just no on the load we wanted this two thing when a component getting loaded we want a two thing so here comes the here okay. comes the here comes the part of the on init so okay. on init is a life cycle hook okay and how the okay. where the on init comes into the picture so on it tell us that hey i done loading my component and i done loading my component so construction construction of that component is completed and after that there is a life cycle hook that is being executed which called as a on init okay and on init where you initialize everything because your component is construction is completed and you wanted to initialize the things okay so basically okay. what is mean by construction the constructor is being called before on init and after that the on init is being called so whatever your dependencies that you have injected already so you can use that dependencies here so anything you cannot assign a value within your constructor uh, so okay. uh, uh, so why you call it is on it we can call it in the constructor or this dot get from server no it's not allowed that's what i'm saying there where we are going so because this dot get from server is a method <laughs> right method of yes. component okay so calling anything within a component constructor is not allowed by definition you can only Can inject dependencies within a constructor of a component. Okay, but you have called that log method on that constructor log object dot log. That's also wrong. Thank but you. But it's working. Working, na? No? It's, it's working, but it's not. It's it's not ideally suggested because this log method is not playing with the DOM model. That's why we are doing it. But it's ideally being called it because that log model is just consoling out, right? but only the injection of the dependency is allowed here okay so whatever your dependencies that should be injected within a constructor now after that there is a second method so what you said the creation of my uh, a creation of my component is done right what is mean by the creation the constructor is being called my all dependencies are injected now i am good to go with now here there is a on init method which will be uh, which will be calling the object of my component okay so now if you define any object you should be calling it within your ng on init method and how to call it by implementing ng on init so far with me yes okay right and here i am calling my method name is from server okay get from server so if i go to mm -hmm. this get from my server what i am doing is whatever i injected here http c right i should mm -hmm. be using it immediately after injecting so i'll be using it within on uh, ng on init and there i'll be calling my method okay and mm. from there i'll be okay from from that method where is my that method great okay so from that method i'll be calling my uh, these dot http c dot get and i am calling my get method right to mm -hmm. my server right till that mm -hmm. point is good now what we are doing we wanted to this get method gives us a this data right this mm -hmm. get method gives us a data so wanted to subscribe to it so i subscribe to it right and it return us the response okay now this response is of type object but in our case that's what it says when you get the response it is of type object our case it is of type the data row so i said that it is a object okay but it also type of the data row in our case that's what i said here okay so okay. data row is also object right data row is also no it's class it's type no what is a what oh it's it is a class. class it's a class class okay. abstract class so it's a abstract class that we have so i said that it is a collection of that right so i define a data row array so i have a array so we have a strong type here we are using typescript so that's why i said that it is a object as well as it can be a array right and uh, this is array of type data row okay and so also then, object is a keyword right object what is object object is a keyword it's a type okay hmm. in response we can expect object 
yes. or better. Right. Exactly. That's how we read it. In response, we can ac accept object or data row. Why object? Because if it's error out, it's not an object, right? It's a data. It's a it's a it's an error object. So that's why I said that it's having a data row or an object. Okay, okay. And then what I said that hey, these can yield a success method. Okay. This can yield a success method or it can yield an error method. Either either what I'm saying is that these whatever the response we get is either of type success or either of type error, right? So in this case, my response is type of object or a data row and it passes to the success method. This is our first parameter, okay? And in second parameter, we are passing it to the error method. So this is error and first is a success and second is error of our subscribe. Okay. okay? Hmm. First is a success, second is a error. So here we are passing it to uh, success method and when we are passing it to the success method, we are type it casting it. We are saying as. What is mean by as? We are type casting response to the data row. We are saying the response is type of data row. Okay. Here we are strongly type casting because it's or right. So we are removing the confusion. We here we say it's not an object. We just want a data row. Okay. And if I go within the success, get success, right? What we do is we are doing now. This is type of the data row, right? However, our customer understand the customer collection, right? So we are converting this data row within the customer. How we can do that using a map function. So what map does is it maps it. Now what I did is I just created a function, good function for it. So I created a customer mapper, which is being called from the uh, DTO customer mapper. Okay, DTO uh, customers mapper because it takes a uh, because it takes a collection. So I call it customers and here I call it customer simple. And that's how you should be doing with your project. You should be creating a function for each responsibilities and minimal. I mean, oh, your class is, should be or your component should do a simple job and everything rest of the thing. You should be creating the separate TS files for it. Mapper a separate TS files and other stuff other like that. In my case, I just included within my component, but it's better to create a separate TS file for it. Or if your project doesn't include a much complexity, it's better. It's okay to create within the component. Like I created it, but it's advisable to go create a separate TS file for it. Anyway, so but you you will be having a customer mapper here, right? And where you will be, I'm using a source dot map because it's a collection. You can use a map. So what are the three most popular methods that you can use on the array? Map, reduce, and filter. Everyone knows so, about them. No, no. I I just wanted to know what map does. Come on, I'll not tell. I, I mean, we we cover this in the JavaScript session, right? You were there. Okay, actually, <laughs> forgot actually. So it will it will iterate or uh, within our array each elements and it will pass through line that. Okay. Exactly. So like for you know the for each, right? Yes, for each I know. Right. So similar way it works. So what it does it for each. Why? What is different between that? It creates a completely new array by iterating the value. Whereas the for doesn't create a new array. For just right. iterate, right? But here what it does it iterate and whatever you return based on that return type, it create a completely new array without tampering to your original array. Okay. 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 That's why we use map. And 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 I'll I'll strongly request you to learn the filter and reduce. Okay. Okay, so this is what we're doing within the map. Okay, so we are mapping, we we are iterating through the values, and we are passing it here, and we are again creating the customer object, and we are returning a customer object here. We are mapping it. We are using a mapper. We learn the mapper, right? We are using a mapper and passing it, and then we get a customer list that we passed here, and that is being passed to our customer model, and that's how. Uh, and then what we are doing is we are setting the uh, customer to the I mean, when we are setting our input fields to the null, uh, and we are setting our customer model so that these value can appear on the UI. These value can appear on the UI, and here everything will be empty. On top in the tree here, everything will be empty. That's how this program is written. So far, you understand get using HTTP. Yes. Any confusion here? No. So let's understand post now. So are you sure, right? Everyone yes. understand this. I'll wait. I'll wait for a two minute. Let please tell me. You understand, right? Yes. 
Hello. Yes. 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 Okay. Let me. My one question is here. Am I? Right. Uh, when we expect data code from database, then why we need to map it clear in? Because we know this is the same data which we want to print. Right. Because view. our right. Because our model has a validation. Right. And our that's why okay. it cannot put our model directly into the database. So we create a DTO, yeah. data transfer object. Right. Yeah. So this yes. DTO is nothing but a data row which has these values. Now once we get back from data, it is it is converted directly to the DTO. The JSON format gets converted into the DTO, okay? Because that's what we store, so we should be getting that. Okay, what is you box? You should be unboxing same. So it's called a boxing unboxing. So you box yes. it using the data row. So you unbox it into the data row. So you unbox into the data row, and then you map your data row to a customer object. Yes, I got. It. That's why the mapper is being used, and this is very common practice. Every project you will see this mapper, and those who are not using it, they should be. Because that's that's the standard practice of doing it. Okay. And then, okay. And those I also told you those classes who create the instances or you call the mapper, they usually call the hydrate method. Anyway, but anyway, let's not go there. So let let we created the mappers and then this the uh, mapper using that we created it and then we as I create get a customer model and then we use a customer mod uh, and sorry we use a customer model. Here, which which this is property is being used to create the for each loop where we are rendering everything and first first property which is used for a text boxes which is a customer class we set it as a empty class so that everything is empty there and that's how our data is being loaded. So everyone so far with me? Okay. Yes. Now let's move on to the post. So how the post works, right? So we just have a ten minutes, but we'll focus it clearly here. Right. So now let's look at the post. So how post is being triggered? So someone comes here and enter the values. So he types it something. He put his name as a Anju and some amount like nine eight six six and send it to server. So these button when you click. So what? Whom? What? So if I go to the HTML, send it to the server, right? So where is the send it to the server? Send it to the server. This is the method. Okay. So what is the what this method does? Send it to the server. So this method is do having a click method, which call to the post to the server. Mm -hmm. So far with me. So yes. when we are doing the post to the server, what this method does is I said ignore this for time. Okay. We'll discuss it or when we're meeting on Monday. And you come up with a question why we wanted this in this happen by following this exercise. You tell me what problem you are facing, and then we'll add this this happen. So right. So there is a what we did is. We create a data row first, okay? Because that's what data row goes into. Our customer has a validation, so we don't want to save that to the uh, into the database. That's why we create a data row. Then the, what is this? This is a mapper, okay? So instead of this, I can simply call it my mapper also. So I'm having a customer mapper. So that's create a reusability of the code. So where is my data row? This is okay. So this this is a different mapper. So it gives me. If I pass the data row, it gives me a customer. Here I want a different mapper. I wanted to pass a custom. I wanted to pass a customer and get a data. Row. Okay, so I have to create a mapper for this. Anyway, but I should be creating a mapper. Anyway, but this what this map is? It maps a data row to the customer. It maps a data row to the customer class. So it mapping it mapping a data row to the oh uh, sorry it maps a customer class to the data row. It maps a customer class to the data row and here is from the customer. These values are being input here, right? Two way binding we have used here in our first lecture. Two way binding we have used here, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why it's mapped to our our customer model. So if you looked in the HTML, we have used a two way binding, right? And that's how it maps to our customer uh, customer I mean customer model. From customer model, we are fetching it code name and amount, and we are creating the object of the uh, data row, and we are passing this data row object to post method. So post method takes a two parameter. First parameter is the URL. Second parameter is the data that we want to send. So which data we want to send? The customer data, right? And then we use after this data is being sent, right? Everything is done. However, why we subscribe to it? Because we wanted to wanted to do action after the after the save after it successfully being performed. Or if it's error out, I wanted to log it somewhere. Okay, mm -hmm. that's why I subscribe to it. So what subscribe method takes a two parameter, two function. First function is Success. Second function is error. Yes. So first yes. function returns me a response, which I pass to the success method, right? 
and mm. this success method so so far with me right this success method yes. what is the what it does we wrote we seen what is the get data from the server right it's again do the get call to the server because we save a new data within the server now we wanted to show it in the ur on the ur mm. right and that's why we uh, we call the uh, get from server method because this post method when successful they'll be it, it just giving us the success code uh, right and it's not telling us the it's not giving us the data back so what we does is that we, we again perform the get call and where we are calling the get method to get the new all the data which also includes the new inserted data and once mm -hmm. we get this data it again resign to the ui and that's how it's being performed so everyone okay. understood this mm. this post yes now i understand yeah you understood but everyone understood right hello yes no i i mean i'm i'm, I'm pretty sure that someone might have some question please please go with your questions little bit understood i mean why little bit why not full and what part is left don't worry i'm not trying to interrogate you i'm trying to understand your thoughts uh, but your post method is not clear okay, about let's, it let's 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 do let's do it again so what i'll request those who understand can drop and those who doesn't please stay on the call because that's it for tomorrow when you're coming back you will be writing this both code input output and as well as the post and sorry the tomorrow lecture is not there i'm shifting it on monday so you get a sufficient time to write this okay and i'll be share okay i'll i'll should i be share it or if, i'm not sure if i share this code everyone will be copying the same code right they're not doing the extra so i i'm not i have hesitated to share it but i'll share it and end our end session so tomorrow session is cancelled and we are meeting on monday everyone understood that Yes. Okay. And when we are meeting on the Monday, you supposed to complete all the exercise that we cover, all eight exercise. Okay. Yes. Okay. And based on the Monday, you uh, whatever you have a doubt, you can drop me so I can include that session also. So I am having few uh, notes with me for from which I received uh, some topics from you that I'll be covering on the Monday. So I given you a time so you can go through the session and you can come up with a doubt. So the Monday will be kind of a doubt solving as well as a new exercise completion because that will be some higher, uh, I mean, some complex concept which you can able to learn it once you understand these eight, or uh, eight concepts. So these other concept is based on these eight, eight concepts. So you, if you understand these eight concepts, we are good. So each day we cover the two two concepts and today we also cover it. And tomorrow we'll be looking looking on a Monday we'll be looking at the guards. What are the guards? What are the different uh, life cycle hooks? Then uh, uh, what are the route guards? Because if you know the route, then only you the, know the route guard. Then we'll be looking into the what is interceptor when we use the interceptor. Okay. And that concept we will be looking on the Monday. So you will be understand them once you understand these basic concepts. Right? Yes. Yes. So I expect you. Okay. So please, please drop. And those who uh, have, have a question on the post, please stay on the call. I hardly take a 10 minutes of there. And let's continue with it. Sushil, you understood, right? You feel free to draw. No, no, I, I stick here. Okay. So what this post method does, it takes a two parameters. What is job of post method is to send the data to the server. So for, so far with me, yes. the first is a URL, right? First is a URL. And second is the data that we wanted to send. Okay. This is coming from HTTP that we have, uh, HTTP that we have declared. Okay. Now, okay. When you post it, right, uh, you need to pass a data to it, right? So what data we wanted to pass is the data row or the DTO that exactly we wanted to store into the database and not our model, right? But we have a model with us. We, we have our model with us, which has a validation into it. So what we do is, what we did is, we just create a data row, okay? And we created the data row dot code data row. Uh, I mean, we created the class uh, object of a data row, and then we assign it, map it to the customer class. Okay. So far with me. Hello. Uh, yes. Sir. Okay. So who, who didn't? Know? Nandan, you understood so far, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so you get a you you how how do you get the mo model of customer model? Uh, how do you get this customer model flourish? This is clear, right? No, tell me how do you get this customer model uh, flourish? How do you get the data within customer model? So 
Yeah. Using two way binding, right? Yeah. NG model. You, we see this on the first day, right? Using mm -hmm. two way binding. Right. You yes. understand the two way binding, right? आपको टू वे बाइंडिंग समझ में आ रही है राइट एन जी मॉडल इट्स इट्स अ मॉडल राइट व्हाट इज द एंगुलर इट्स अ बाइंडिंग फ्रेमवर्क सो इट बाइंड योर एस टी एम एल टू योर कंपोनेंट वेर कंपोनेंट बाइंड टू द मॉडल राइट सो यू कैन यूज द कंपोनेंट हियर द टू वे बाइंडिंग फ्लरिश द आर कंपोनेंट फ्लरिश आर फ्लरिश आर मॉडल दैट इज डिफाइंड विद इन द कंपोनेंट सो दिस इज द प्रॉपर्टी दैट वी डिफाइन वी आर विद इन कंपोनेंट कस्टमर मॉडल इज अ प्रॉपर्टी दैट वी डिफाइन विद इन आर कंपोनेंट कस्टमर मॉडल इज ऑफ टाइप कस्टमर so we whatever we type within our text boxes or everything that that is get assigned to the customer okay customer code customer name and customer amount okay and when yes. we click on this button what this button does this button calls a post method right here it calls a post method so once it calls the post method okay once it calls the post method we use the our http c which we injected within our component we use that and we first parameter is a url second parameter is a data now we cannot directly pass the uh, customer model here we cannot directly pass the customer model here the reason being we we wanted to pass just amount code and name and we don't wanted to pass the validation that is defined within the customer okay so that's why what we do we create a mapper of the data row we map it to the data row and then we pass it here so so far everything the post logic is done the subscribe is not needed but why we do subscribe because we wanted to see that if it successful or not so we subscribe to it and what we say is that once this post call is uh, successful it return us observable okay this observable has a two part when we subscribe to it it gives us a two thing it it gives us a success and it gives us a error so far with me nahi uh, yes. sir samajh mein nahi aaya so acha theek hai yahi confusion hai na to theek hai तो यहाँ जो पोस्ट मेथड है ना वो अपने को एक ऑब्जर्वर ऑब्जर्वर रिटर्न करती है ओके नाउ ये जो ऑब्जर्वर होता है इसको सब्सक्राइब करना पड़ता है बिकॉज दैट इज द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ओके वो कॉन्ट्रैक्ट डिफाइन है मतलब जब ऑब्जर्वर का क्लास होता है ना तो वो जो एक हाँ. वो जो ऑब्जर्वर का क्लास होता है वेयर यू गेट द डेटा फ्रॉम इट यू हैव टू सब्सक्राइब टू इट क्योंकि वो पब्लिश सब्सक्राइब बेस पे है सब्सक्राइब इज कंटिन्यूसली वॉच की मेरे को डेटा रिटर्न आ रहा है कि नहीं आ रहा है आ, नहीं आ रहा है कि नहीं आ रहा है so you publish some data and subscriber is a subscribe to that data and it gets mm -hmm. that data is a publisher subscriber model so what is mean by publisher subscriber model to aap jo radio ke signal publish hote uh, radio ke liye signal publish hote and you have a radio to aap uske andar ghumate ho and you subscribe to it right aap yes. continue watch karte ho ki yaar ye signal aa gaye to mere ko mil jayenge to waise hi hai ye data aa gaya to ye subscriber method ko mil jayega but either wo jo signal milega na radio ka baat kar rahe ho jab log ne सक्सेस हुआ और एरर हुआ वो कैसे हाँ, पता चलेगा क्योंकि ये जो सब्सक्राइब मेथड है इसके अंदर दो पैरामीटर पाओ ये दो पैरामीटर लेती है ये जो नेक्स्ट है ना इसका हाँ, नाम सक्सेस है और इसका नेक्स्ट पैरामीटर क्या है नेक्स्ट एरर नेक्स्ट मेथड है ना इसको क्या होता है कि ऑब्जर्वेबल कैन रिटर्न मल्टीपल थिंग तो पहला आ गया दूसरा आ गया तीसरा आ गया ऐसा होता है अपने केस में एक ही आ रहा है तो अपन वो नेक्स्ट को ही सक्सेस मान के चल रहे हैं ठीक है और एरर uh, क्या होती है कि एरर कुछ आ गया ना सर्वर पे तो वो एरर तेरे को यहाँ पर मिल जाएगा सो फॉर विथ मी यस यस यहाँ पर समझाना ये जो सक्सेस देती है एंड ये एरर देता है आर के से वो जो सब्सक्राइबर अपना जो अपन घुमाते हैं तो एंटीना से वो जो आएगा तो एंटीना को वैसे बना के रखा है कि एंटीना सक्सेस लेगा या एरर लेगा तो अभी के लिए हम लोगों ने सक्सेस बना के रखा है बराबर नहीं अभी के लिए हमने दोनों का बनाया ना देखो ये कॉमा है कॉमा दिख रहा है आपको हाँ। तो ये एक एरो फंक्शन है ये एरो फंक्शन है ये एरो फंक्शन सक्सेस देता है ये सक्सेस लेता है और उसके कॉमा के बाद जो ये दूसरा एरो फंक्शन है वो एरर लेता है यहाँ तक समझा हाँ समझ में आया बट ये जो डेटा है ना डेटा मतलब ये डेटा मैनिपुलेटिंग क्या डेटा जेसन से उसका बात कर रहे हैं हम लोग नहीं या ये सर्वर से कोई भी सर्वर से जो डेटा आ रहा है वो वो जेसन फॉर्मेट में आता है नहीं नहीं बट यहाँ जेसन फॉर्मेट नहीं आएगा ना क्योंकि हम लोग यहाँ पोस्ट कर रहे हैं और सिर्फ सक्सेस आएगा ना ये तो सर्वर से ही आएगा ना रिस्पॉन्स रिस्पॉन्स जो आएगा वो जेसन फॉर्मेट में आएगा उसको ऑटोमेटिकली जेसन फॉर्मेट में कौन कन्वर्ट करता है तो वो एच क्लाइंट करता है ओके एचटीपी से वो क्लाइंट है ना तो पहले अगर तो इफ यू यूज द एचटीपी देयर इज रिस्पांस डॉट जेसन इज नीडेड टू कन्वर्ट इट इनटू द जेसन सो वहां पर स्पेसिफिकली समवन डूस द रिस्पांस डॉट जेसन टू कन्वर्ट इट इनटू द जेसन हियर वी डोंट रिक्वायर इट 
बिकॉज इट ऑटो गेट कन्वर्टेड थ्रू द एच डी पी एच डी पी क्लाइंट तो पहला जो था एच डी पी फॉर विच वी डू रिक्वायर टू कन्वर्ट इट इन टू दिन बट एच डी पी क्लाइंट हैज इन बिल्ड फंक्शनलिटी विच डज दिस जॉब फॉर अस तो मेरा क्वेरी है पोस्ट में हम लोग क्या एक्सपेक्ट करेंगे सक्सेस में हां हां सक्सेस में वी वी एक्सपेक्ट द रिस्पांस इन द जेसन फॉर्मेट दैट इज दैट इज बीइंग रिटर्न फ्रॉम द सर्वर विद डेटा विद डेटा नो इट्स इट जस्ट हैज अ कोड व्हाटएवर रिटर्न फ्रॉम इट सक्सेस कोड राइट दैट्स सक्सेस कोड दैट्स इट ओके ओके सो ये 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 समझ के लेते हैं सर्वर है ना वो सर्वर को जो चाहिए वो सेंड कर सकता है वो सर्वर का खुद का प्रॉब्लम मतलब खुद का काम है वो पोस्ट में अपने को पूरा डेटा भी दे सकता है या पोस्ट में पूरा डेटा देने के लिए वो पूरा रिस्पांस कोड ही सेंड कर सकता है तो वो जब रिटर्न करता है ना तो वो ऐसा भी रिटर्न कर सकता है ओके बस तो वो ओके क्या करेगा अपने को 200 रिस्पांस दे देगा बराबर कि भाई हो गया बराबर ठीक है उसने ओके ऐसा रिटर्न किया तो तो उस केस में अपने को यही आएगा वो जो डेटा जो आता है चैनल से बराबर तो वो जो चैनल आता है वो टेक्स फॉर्मेट में आ सकता है जेसन फॉर्मेट में आ सकता है एक्सएमएल फॉर्मेट में आ सकता है बराबर ओके बराबर तो वो जो डेटा हाँ. आता है जो चैनल से मतलब जो पोस्ट होता है उसको ऑटोमेटिकली जेसन फॉर्मेट में ये HTTPS कर देता है एच टी डी एच टी पी क्लाइंट कर देता है क्लाइंट करता है समझ गया तो यहाँ पर पहले अगर तुमने एच टी पी यूज किया होगा ना तो यहाँ पर रिस्पॉन्स को ना डायरेक्टली डॉट जेसन करके उसको मॉडिफाई करना पड़ता था तो उसको रीड करने के लिए उसको रीड करने के लिए तो क्या पहले स्ट्रिंग आता था क्या वहां से हाँ बराबर स्ट्रिंग आता था स्ट्रिंग आता था टेक्स फॉर्मेट आता था तो उसको वो हाँ, तो उसको जेसन में मॉडल अभी ये खुद खुद हो जाता है जेसन में तो अभी ये जो रिस्पांस आएगा वो जेसन ऑब्जेक्ट होगा जिसके अंदर ओके रिस्पांस लिखा होगा या जो भी रिस्पांस अपने को मिलता है वो तो अपन वो सक्सेस अगर वो सक्सेस है ना तो वो सक्सेस के अंदर जाएगा अगर वो एरर है उसके अंदर कुछ एरर कोड है तो एरर कोड के टाइम वो क्या आता है विट इज ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ इट इज अ क्लास ऑफ टाइप एरर तो फिर वो एरर इसमें इसमें चला जाएगा खुद ब खुद ही ठीक है एंड और यही बताया था कंसोल लॉगर या फिर वो लॉगर हम यहीं पे यूज़ करते हैं। बराबर इसके एरर वाला जो लॉगर डॉट लॉग है ना वो यहाँ पर आएगा ये जो अपना है वो यहाँ पर हाँ 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 और ये जो बाकी सक्सेस मेथड है उसके अंदर मैंने क्या किया है क्योंकि एज ऑफ नाउ अपना जो सर्वर है जेसन सर्वर वो अपने को सिर्फ एरर कोड देता है तो इसलिए मैंने सक्सेस के अंदर वापस से गेट कॉल वाला मेथड कॉल कर दिया तो वापस जाके डेटा लेके आएगा तो नया डेटा अपने सर्वर में सेव किया है वो भी अपने को मिल जाएगा अच्छा ये समझ में नहीं आ रहा मुझे की वापस एक कॉल क्यों किया राइट 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 तो आइर वही सिर्फ न्यू डेटा फेच करके अपेंड कर सकते हैं या पूरा डेटा फेच करके अपेंड कर सकते हैं मैं इन मैं थोड़ा सा ऑप्टिमाइज सॉल्यूशन नहीं दिख रहा हूं मैं पूरा डेटा फेच कर रहा हूं ओके okay. अच्छा वो मेरा क्वेश्चन है अच्छा जो सक्सेस होगा जो रिस्पांस आएगा और जो एरर का रिस्पांस होगा वो इस वो तो सेम ही आएगा सर्वर से तो सेम डेटा ही आ रहा है ना सर्वर से नहीं 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 जो सर्वर से डेटा आता है वो सेम आता है लेकिन अपना उसके ऊपर सब्सक्राइब वो जो डेटा है वो ऑब्जर्वेबल मेथड है ना अपना सब्सक्राइब मेथड पड़ा है उसके अंदर तो सर्वर से डेटा आता है वो हम लोगों ने हाँ, कॉन्ट्रैक्ट हाँ. बनाया है एच है ना वो एक कॉन्ट्रैक्ट देता है जिसका नाम है ऑब्जर्वेबल ओके okay? सर्वर से तो मैं जो जानता हूँ सर्वर से आइडर डेटा आ सकता है या नहीं आता है बराबर तेरे सर्वर का दो होता है फायर एंड फरगेट तो वो फायर किया तुम्हें फरगेट हो गया ठीक है और आइडर इट गिवर से रिस्पॉन्स बैक IDB uh-huh. should give us a response back because HTTP C HTTP is a stateless pro- protocol HTTP yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So is ठीक है तो it should give us a response you telling that the operation is successful or not ठीक है तो server से तेरे को response आएगा but यहाँ पर हम लोग क्या करते हैं कि server से जो response आएगा तब तक ये वो तब तक ये इंतजार करता रहेगा जब तक response नहीं आता subscribe जो method है वो मतलब तेरा जो antenna है वो तब तक तब तक हवा में से जब तक सिग्नल उसको मिलता नहीं तब तक वो उसको मॉनिटर uh, करता रहेगा कि मेरे को सिग्नल मिल रहा है नहीं मिल रहा है मिल रहा है जैसे ही मिलना चालू हो जाएगा तेरा रेडियो चालू हो गया वो तो, से होता है ना एसिंक्रोनस बराबर 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 तो उसी को उसी का जो कॉन्ट्रैक्ट है एसिंक्रोनस का हाँ वो उसका उसको हम लोग पब्लिक नहीं इसको जो पब्लिक सब्सक्राइब मॉडल है वो यहाँ पर इम्प्लीमेंटेड है ठीक है अभी असिंक्रोनस वगैरह उसमें मत घूलो ठीक है यहाँ पर इसको थोड़ा सा समझ के ले तो जितना मल्टीपल टर्म आओगे उतना कंफ्यूज होते जाओगे अपने आप को ठीक है तो यहाँ पर तुम्हारा ऑब्जर्वेबल रिटर्न होता है ये समझ के ले लो ऑब्जर्वेबल का सब्सक्राइब कर सकते हैं और जैसे ही सब्सक्राइब कर सकते हैं तो ऑब्जर्वेबल एक कॉन्ट्रैक्ट डिफाइन करता है कि आपको रिस्पॉन्स मिलेगा या एरर मिलेगा 
ये ऑब्जर्वेबल खुद ही बताता है उनको कि तेरे को रिस्पॉन्स आ रहा है कि एरर आ रहा है और बेस्ड ऑन दैट ऑब्जर्वेबल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी लेता है कि मैं कहाँ पर कौन से फंक्शन को कॉल करूँ अपने को रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी लेने की कोई जरूरत नहीं ये सब ऑब्जर्वेबल खुद ही करके देता है अपने बराबर यहाँ पे ऑब्जर्वेबल कोई ऑब्जेक्ट नहीं बना है ऑब्जर्वेबल के मतलब एंगुलर में एक में देखा था मतलब फंक्शन होता है टाइप डिफाइन करता हूं वी एक्सपेक्ट ऑब्जर्वेबल फ्रॉम दिस लाइन दिस कॉल एस ओके सब्सक्राइब मेथड से अच्छा अच्छा हो जाए इस टाइप वो आर एक आर एक जीएस का वो पार्ट है ओ अच्छा आर एक जीएस का होता है ओहो सॉरी सर और मैं यहां पे मेरे मेरे क्वेश्चन है यहां पे जो हम लोग रिस्पांस के समय सक्सेस रिस्पांस के समय में जो हम लोग सक्सेस मेथड को कॉल कर रहे हैं रेदर देन कॉलिंग टू सक्सेस मैसेज मेथड हम लोग डायरेक्ट तो जो रिस्पॉन्स सक्सेस रिस्पॉन्स आ रहा है उसको हम लोग कस्टमर के एरे में कस्टमर मॉडल के एरे में पुस कर सकते हैं कर सकते हैं इसको टाइप कर कर दो ना जैसे किया भी है मैंने हां बिकॉज़ ये हां हां यहां पे जब हम लोग सक्सेस ये देखो ना ये सक्सेस मेथड हां भाई आपने किया सक्सेस मेथड सक्सेस मेथड को देखोगे तो भी मैंने वही किया कि आप मैंने वहां पर उसको बोल के रखा है फ्रॉम सर्वर ये देखो सक्सेस मेथड में वही किया डायरेक्टली पुश किया उसको राइट Okay. कर सकते हैं आरे में डायरेक्ट पुश करना ही चाहिए बट ये बॉक्सिंग अनबॉक्सिंग का कंसेप्ट जो बोला था वो याद रखना जिसमें जिस डेटा जिस ऑब्जेक्ट मतलब जिस डेटा टाइप से आपने स्टोर किया है वही डेटा टाइप आपको यूज करना है वो रिस्पांस को अनबॉक्स करने के लिए अनबॉक्स करने के लिए वो सेंड करने के लिए दोनों इसीलिए ओडीटीओ का हां मतलब बराबर बराबर मतलब जो अगर सपोज आपने लेट इट बी एंटिटी करके क्लास यूज करके डेटा सेव किया है बराबर तो आप डेटा लोगे वापस तभी एंटिटी क्लास में ही उसको टाइप टाइप कास्ट करोगे बिकॉज़ यहां पे जो सक्सेस मेथड हम लोग बना रहे हैं वहां पे जो रिस्पांस पैरामीटर पास कर रहे हैं वो अनयूज्ड है वो यूज हो ही नहीं रहा है उस मेथड के अंदर नहीं हो रहा है ना इसका गेट सक्सेस हो रहा है हां हो रही है रिस्पांस जो पैरामीटर हम लोग पास किए हैं हां रिस्पांस उसको कुछ यूज नहीं हो रहा हां मैं वही बोल रहा हूं वही बोल क्योंकि क्योंकि इसमें एरर कोड है ना इसको सक्सेस कोड है सिर्फ तो उसको लेके क्या करें इसलिए वो यूज नहीं करेगा नहीं डेटा नहीं आएगा एक्चुअली वहां पर सिर्फ सक्सेस वहां पर सिर्फ ओके ओके लिख के आएगा ओके लिख के आएगा या जो डेटा हम लोग पुश कर रहे हैं वो पूरा डेटा वो वो डेटा नहीं आएगा ओके लिख के आएगा उसके लिए तो वापस आप भी लिख रहे हैं हां वापस डेटा लाने के लिए आपने और लिखा है मैंने यहां देखी 49 लाइन नंबर पे वापस मेथड बनाया उसको कॉल किए हैं फिर से एज एक बार थोड़ा कंफ्यूजन हो रहा है यहां पे क्योंकि मैं बता दूं आपको क्या कंफ्यूजन हो रहा है आपने जो आपका कोड प्रोजेक्ट का कोड देखा होगा वापस पोस्ट करने पे हां पोस्ट करने पे हां वो पोस्ट करने पे जो डेटा हम लोग तो क्या है मान लो डेटा रिस्पांस वहां पे सकते हैं तो अपना तो फेक सर्वर है ना ये जेसन सर्वर है तो ये जेसन सर्वर का बिहेवियर ऐसा है कि यहां पर आप पोस्ट करते हो ना तो सिर्फ आपको वो रिस्पांस कोड देता है मैं मैं प्रैक्टिस का समय जेसन सर्वर से ही ट्राई किया था तो पूरा डेटा आया था क्या हां यार पूरा डेटा वो चलो देखते हैं तो शायद से मेरे को मेरे को लगता है पूरा डेटा आता होगा मैंने उसको वापस से गेट करके अननेसेसरी किया तो इसको कंट्रोल करके देखते हैं ठीक है तो वी कैन वी कैन वी कैन बी श्योर अबाउट इट थैंक यू फॉर टेलिंग मी मुझे लगा कि जेसन सर्वर का मैंने नहीं आता था डेटा ग्रेट एवरीवन अंडरस्टैंड ना इसका क्वेश्चन जो ही आस्क इट ये क्वेश्चन में इन्होंने बोला कि डेटा वापस आता है तो इफ आता है तो वी डोंट नीड अ गेट मेथड वी कैन डायरेक्टली गेट द डेटा फ्रॉम देयर लेकिन मुझे लगता है आता नहीं दैट्स नॉट आई या समझ में मुझे भी कंफ्यूज हो रहा था मतलब एफ से क्यों कॉल कर रहे हैं डेटा डेटा तो आ ही जा रहा है पहले राइट 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 ठीक है चलो सो आई वाज नॉट अवेयर अबाउट इट कि डेटा आ जाएगी सर्वर डेटा देता है पोस्ट में मुझे लगता है कि नहीं देता है दैट्स व्हाट आई यूज द गेट बट इट्स गुड दैट यू हाइलाइटेड इट एंड लेट्स सी इन प्रैक्टिस यस सो टू द नाम देते हैं आज आपको पता होगा चलेगा एंड ये ना हम लोग अच्छा डीबग करना भी मैं आपको सिखाता हूं उसको भी देखना जरा ध्यान से तो इसके आपको क्या करना है सोर्स में जाए बराबर इसके सोर्स में आपको यहाँ पर ये इसको मिनिमाइज करना है लोकल उसको और वेब पैक को ओपन करना है इसके अंदर एस आई है ठीक है ये कस्टमर ऐप है अपना इसके अंदर अपना किसके अंदर है यूटिलिटी कस्टमर कस्टमर के अंदर अपना कस्टमर मॉडल में होगा कस्टमर कंपोनेंट में होगा कस्टमर कंपोनेंट में अपना यहाँ पर आता है कंसोल डॉट लॉक सक्सेस मेथड है सक्सेस मेथड ये है और यहाँ पर अपन ने कॉल किया है यहाँ पर ये बोल रहा है कि डेटा आता है तो सेंट सर्वर किया ठीक है ये यहाँ पर एक डिबगर लुका मैंने उसको आगे ढक्का दिया यहाँ पर डेटा आ गया मेरा रिस्पॉन्स में कुल तो जो वही डेटा है वही आता है तो इसको मेरे को अपेंड करना पड़ेगा पूरा डेटा नहीं आता 
उतना ही डेटा जो अपन ने पोस्ट किया ना जितना डेटा अपन पोस्ट करेंगे उतना ही डेटा रिटर्न मिलता है हाँ इसलिए मैं बोला ना वो जो डेटा रिस्पॉन्स में आ रहा है जो डेटा मेरा सक्सेसफुली उसको तो मेरे को क्या करना पड़ेगा ये डेटा को मेरे को वापस पुश करना पड़ेगा इसके अंदर कस्टमर हार्डली फाइव मिनट तो इसको क्या करते हैं बता इसको पुश करते हैं किस में है कस्टमर कनेक्शन ना प्लीज कस्टमर मॉडल एक मिनट मेरा ना मॉडल मेरा मशीन का एक मिनट है ना यस हेलो राइट सो लेट्स डू इट कस्टमर मॉडल्स डॉट एड और सॉरी कुछ कुछ इज मेथड वेयर आल की सही आ रही है कुछ कर दो इफ इट्स अलाउड इन कूल एंड नाउ वी डोंट रिक्वायर गेट सो हम लोगों ने गेट निकाल दिया एंड वी आर यूजिंग दिस आउटपुट राइट एंड लेट्स सी रिएक्शन इफ इट्स वर्क इसको रिफ्रेश करता हूं यहाँ पर डाला मैंने सोल्यूशन वन लास्ट क्वेरी हमने इसमें वो क्यों नहीं यूज किया सबमिट एंगुलर का सबमिट मेथड बाई डिफोल अपन ने क्लिक किया है राइट एंगुलर का सबमिट मेथड हाँ अपन ने यूज नहीं किया क्लिक करके मेथड कॉल करके उसको ऐसे किया है हाँ हाँ क्योंकि मैं बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर यूज करना चाहता हूँ मतलब कोई कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी यूज नहीं करना चाहता था यहाँ ओके तो इसलिए मैंने क्लिक मेथड को यूज किया जो इवेंट है जो हमने सीखा था वही क्या जो यहाँ पर बेसिकली मेरे को यही बताना है कि यहाँ से जो क्लिक बाइंडिंग है उसको कैसे करते हैं ये जो ये जो सिंटैक्स है इसका मतलब क्या है राइट तो उसके थ्रू अपन कर सकते हैं ना उन में जो फॉर्म का सबमिट फॉर्म का सबमिट बटन की बात कर रहे हो ना एंगुलर का नहीं फॉर्म की सबमिट हाँ फॉर्म की एक सबमिट मेथड आती है जिसमें पूरा फॉर्म मिल जाता है तो फॉर्म डॉट बराबर उसके थ्रू भी कर सकते हैं कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं बट मेरे मेरे को यहाँ पर ये यह बाइंडिंग करनी पड़ेगी फॉर्म का सबमिट वो एच टी एम का मेथड है वो आप कोई भी एच टी एम के अंदर यूज कर सकते हो फॉर्म डॉट सबमिट और वो एस टी एम एल फाइव उसको वैलिडेशन भी प्रोवाइड करता है तो ये वैलिडेशन लिखे ना वो भी एस टी एम एल फाइव से आप सिंपली एस टी एम एल थ्रू ही कर सकते हो ये एंगुलर की भी जरूरत नहीं है और ये जो सबमिट है वो भी उसका मेथड है एस टी एम एल फाइव का मेथड है उसका और एंगुलर का कोई लेना देना नहीं है आप फॉर्म बना के भी वो सबमिट मेथड यूज कर सकते हैं। ओके। बेसिक वैलिडेशन ही होगा बट इसमें हाँ बेसिक वैलिडेशन होता है वो इसका ईमेल बीमेल सब आ जाता है जिसके अंदर ओके okay, हाँ 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 याद है रिक्वायर्ड ये देखो रिक्वायर्ड है राइट बट ये अगर कोई एस टी वाला ब्राउजर यूज करेगा तो ये वैलिडेशन फट जाएंगे फट जाएंगे फिर ओके इनपुट टाइप ये तो मतलब क्लाइंट साइड वैलिडेशन है आपको अंत में सर्वर साइड करना ही पड़ेगा ना तो ये तो हमारा पूरा फ्रेमवर्क ही क्लाइंट साइड है ना सर्वर साइड क्या करते हैं उससे अपना लेना देना है नहीं लेना नहीं नहीं अगर ईमेल को टेस्ट करना है ईमेल एग्जिस्ट है या नहीं ठीक है पासवर्ड यूजर नेम एग्जिस्ट मतलब प्रेजेंट है या नहीं सर्वर में तो बेसिकली आप बोल रहे हो ईमेल को टेस्ट करना एग्जिस्ट है कि नहीं देखो हम लोग ईमेल फॉर्मेट की बात करते हैं मतलब किसी ईमेल में उसे फॉर्मेट बराबर देना चाहिए वो क्लाइंट साइड होगा हाँ, हाँ, वही बोल रहा है अगर वहाँ पे मल्टीपल अगर डेटा है तो उसको स्प्लिट कैसे कर सकते हैं मल्टीपल अगर मतलब तेरा ऑब्जर्वेबल के अंदर मल्टीपल डेटा आ रहा है नेक्स्ट 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 थ्रू 
हाँ आपने जैसे अभी बाइन किया मैं मैं मंडे को दिखाता हूँ इसको सबको दिखाना चाहिए ये मैं मंडे को दिखाता हूँ वैसा वैसा कुछ करके आर एक्स के अंदर देखते हैं ओके और और एक चीज मंडे को मेरे को अंडरस्टैंडिंग चाहिए रहेगा कि लाइक मेरा जो एपीआई हम कॉल कर रहे हैं ना दो डिफरेंट एपीआई से कॉल करके उसके डेटा को मर्ज करके जस्ट व्यू में दिखा आर एक्स जी मतलब दो एपीआई को आप कॉल कर रहे हो ठीक है दो यू आर एल अलग 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 यू और जैसे एक एक एपीआई में मेरा फर्स्ट नेम एंड लास्ट नेम है एंड अनदर एपीआई में कुछ कुछ भी है मान मान लीजिए सैलरी है वो दोनों कॉल करके एक मिनट एक मिनट आई हैव टू टेक अ हार्ड स्टॉप मेरा ना एक मेरे को एक इंपॉर्टेंट मीटिंग है सो यू डू ड्रॉप मी और मेल आई विल गेट बैक टू यू ओके ना तो भाई थैंक्स थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम थैंक्स थैंक्स थैंक यू बाय